Oh, you're in for it now. There's literally over a thousand in-development strategy games across a multitude of sub-genres, but where to begin? How about this list? I've spent months researching all the upcoming strategy games with promise and compiled them all here, including a bunch of new ones I've never mentioned before. Sit back, relax, and get ready to be in the know. I'm gonna try organize this list by subgenre, so first it's the 4X games, beginning with Dominion's 6 Rise of the Pantocrator. This is a game where you control a powerful being that rules a nation and aspires to godhood. The type of pretender gods can vary from magically powerful archmages to old dragons to an enormous tree. Dominions is a game which has a long history, and this sixth mainline iteration is supposed to continue its deep 4x turn-based strategy gaming, and it's promising a large variety of spells and units. So yeah, this is a turn-based 4x strategy game where you are a god. You can play versus the AI or PvP or team up with other players to play versus the AI or basically however you want. When you start the game you decide what kind of god you want to be and in order to win you have to become the one true god, defeating all of your enemies and claiming the thrones of ascension. And yeah, this might not be a mainstream game, but the Dominion series started in 2002 and it had a sort of niche appeal and it's got this sort of smaller but very dedicated fan base. So if you haven't heard of Dominions before, then this is a good chance to have a look into it. Dominion 6 is supposed to be scaling up compared to their last game, where the armies are larger. There's the addition of this whole new magic path. And an important point is there's now a separation of mounts and riders. Riders and mounts now have separate stats and can be targeted individually, which adds a new layer of strategy. So I know this game does have a sort of a dated look, but you know, it's been a long time coming and it's clearly popular enough to keep going and making new games. So this is releasing, supposed to be on the 17th of January 2024, so it's kicking off the year. So if you're curious, have a closer look at Dominion 6 Rise of the Pantocrator. For one that looks just phenomenal, Songs of Silence. This is a story-rich strategy game set in two distinct fantasy worlds, threatened by the all-devouring silence. The game features a mix of turn-based kingdom management, exploration, and hero development, which contrasts with short and intense real-time battles. So it's turn-based on the kingdom management part, and then you got the real-time stuff happening just for the battles themselves. This game does promise an epic scale, but they do consider modern life complications, and they say that there are maps that can be completed in a single evening. So although this could be a grand strategy that takes up all of your time, they have some considerations for those of us with jobs. On the world map you'll be leading powerful armies and exploring randomly generated maps, where you can even hide in terrain to outwit your opponents, and you gotta manage scarce resources to build your ravaged land and defeat rival kingdoms. Each faction has their own distinct playstyles, and there are certain cards that you will be playing, but not by building a deck or anything like that, they're just representations of unique actions granted by heroes and locations, so they're like special abilities. Now, this is a turn-based game primarily, as the kingdom management part is all turn-based, like a typical turn-based 4X, but the battles are real-time. Good news is there is a free demo on Steam at the time of recording, but for full release it's just coming soon for now. That's Songs of Silence. Next up we've got Stellaris Nexus. This is a simultaneous turn-based multiplayer 4X game which offers the full spectrum of the strategic 4X experience. You choose a unique faction and leader and challenge up to five other players, plotting and battling your way to galactic dominance, promising to be all in about one hour. <laughs> I think we've seen a trend 
right now with these 4x grand strategies. And we're seeing this across other strategy games as well, where they're very much going, oh, you can play a game in one hour. One hour seems to be kind of the goal, but an hour or an evening. So many 4x games already can take so much of your time. And I think a lot of people aren't jumping in because they just take too much time. So it seems like many of these games are seeing that feedback and allowing you to finish these games quicker. So this game is promising social strategy, where you're supposed to have a lot of diplomacy with the other players. The skill-based matchmaking to make sure you're up against people of similar skill levels, where you'll be forming unlikely alliances, executing bitter betrayals, and quietly plotting from the shadows to steal victory. In this game, you start from a safe haven of your homeworld, and you rapidly expand across the galaxy, eventually trying to take control of the galactic throne world called Nexus. But of course, everyone wants to do that, so there'll be military conflict and diplomatic dealings to try and get what you want. Overall, Stellaris Nexus looks pretty cool. Even though the footage does look like real-time battles, it is turn-based. And although there was a demo to try earlier in 2023, right now there's no current demo and the full release date is just to be announced. So we're not sure when Stellaris Nexus will be landing for reals, but you can keep an eye on it if it seems interesting. Staying in space, Alliance of the Sacred Suns. Here we have a sci-fi grand strategy RPG-esque kind of thing that begins with your coronation as the head of an interstellar empire and ends with your demise. You manage feuding noble houses and the schemes of would-be usurpers as you try to revive the glory of an empire on the brink of collapse. We've been watching this game for a few years now, and there is some hype about it. The Emperor is dead, and now there's everyone vying for control of space. But there's some interesting dynastic approaches here. You create your own ruler's background to determine who you are, how you were raised, and what you do best, your house, your culture, and all of that sort of stuff. And your character will age over time, with their health either declining or improving based on events and just age. So you can sort of think of this as kind of a Space Crusader Kings? And while you are alive, you'll be maintaining relationships with other leaders, dealing with quarrels within the Great Houses, managing your high-level advisors, sorting out the government stuff, and just trying to build a legacy. So yeah, if you like Crusader Kings, but you wanted to go to space and the future instead, this one sounds like it's for you. Also, nicely, this is supposed to be built for mods, so the community, if active, will keep this going with extra content and various other fan changes, which is always a good thing to have as an option. And for now, Alliance of the Sacred Sons is just scheduled for a 2024 release, so sometime over the next year. For you Warhammer 40k fans, Zephon. This is from the developers of Warhammer 40k Gladius, and this is a post-apocalyptic 4x strategy game built on Proxy's unique tactical combat system, which they've used before. You guide survivors through a turbulent future, navigating unexpected disasters, eldritch horrors, and cyberpunk monstrosities. So it's up to you to figure out how you're going to survive. Battles are extensive with over 50 unique units in turn-based survival strategy, both in single and multiplayer. And you'll have three asymmetric paths you could follow. Human, voice, and cyber. Or you could combine them in unique ways. And in this one, combat does happen on the overworld, so it sort of seems like a Civ, but it's sci-fi and Warhammer 40k. Even building up your cities from scrappy settlement bases kind of thing to sprawling metropolises as your faction expands its sphere of influence. There's a tech tree, the enemy AI is supposed to have likes and dislikes so they're not just strategic but characterful. You get to choose a side in the war, all building up to resolving a prophecy. I mean, overall, this looks really cool, and if you're a 40k fan, then this seems like a no-brainer. But if you're not sure, there is a free demo on Steam, so just go try it and see if it's something you want to look forward to. Because it's set to release sometime in 2024, so you can try it now, and then if you want to wishlist it, then you can just wishlist it. 
Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it would be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Thank you. Alright, next game. Revival Recolonization. Set in a post-apocalyptic version of Earth, Revival is a 4x strategy game where the world and its rules can change at key moments, which is supposed to create a deep and replayable experience. Now, because this is a post-apocalyptic uh, sort of future world, things are kinda different here. It's not quite just ahistorical. You know, you could have sudden weather disasters, to zombie infestations, to bans on certain weapon types. So the whole point of this game is that it's sort of like a Civilization 4X game, but the world and the parameters of the conflicts and the situations are constantly changing, which will force you to change your playstyle. Combat itself here is tactical, taking place in turn-based battles, and generally the setting and the world is kind of interesting. It's not just, you know, post-apocalyptic. There are remnants of modern-day Earth in this, uh, in the landscape. So it's sort of interesting to sort of explore this world and see what became of the planet. Now, this one has been in early access since about the middle of 2023 to few but very positive user reviews on Steam. Currently over the 85% mark, so generally this has sort of a niche following at the moment, and it is continuing to develop. They say they mean to be in early access for about 6 months, which should mean an early 2024 release window, but let's face it, they said, it depends on player feedback, and whenever a developer says it's going to take six months but it depends on player feedback, it means it's probably going to take a year or more. So if they remotely stick to their release window, Revival Recolonization will release sometime in 2024, but really it depends on your feedback. For some of the best pixel art you've seen, Songs of Conquest. We have been watching this game for a while now. It's been a number of years and it's been in early access since 2022. So it's been a while, but it's going very well and it looks amazing because personally I'm a huge fan of pixel art, but also this sort of feels like Heroes of Might and Magic or Age of Wonders, that kind of vibe, and it's just right up my alley. But it's also got 87% positive on Steam, so you know, if you haven't checked that, maybe you want to check it out. In this game, you raise mighty armies, wield ancient magic, and build an empire. It's a turn-based strategy adventure game which has the RPG elements, like most fantasy 4Xs do. But there's also tactical combat and kingdom management, so there's the overworld and then battles take place on their little arenas. As it's been going through development, the factions have been expanding and they're pretty unique. It's not just humans, orcs, elves. There's the lizard people, the undead have some weird things going on as well, and the human factions aren't just human. They have certain alignments and alliances, which really do set them apart. And it's called Songs of Conquest because the whole thing narratively is built around songs? They're calling it a choral campaign, as it tells the tale of rise and ruin through various characters and factions. They're also pushing the in-game level editor for people to create their own adventures and stories with their maps. Not just building versus maps and competitive settings, but also stories and events and goings on, which is always really cool. And having played some of it, the missions do feel quite different. Sometimes you're escaping from a chasing enemy, kind of like in an FDL sort of vibe. Other times you're building up a giant empire or breaking out prisoners. Mission design is actually kind of diverse. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm into Songs of Conquest. And since it's been playable for a couple years now, you might know it already. But if you don't know it, I can highly recommend checking it out. Yield. This is a compact yet complete strategy experience where every choice matters. Rome is crumbling and you have to choose your favorite king and build your kingdom in the ashes of the Roman Empire. I've had a little explore of this game and it is supposed to be simple to learn but difficult to master, but many strategy games say that. 
and you are supposed to have meaningful choices as you go through these games. However, it is not these large, grand, forever games that take weeks to complete. It's supposed to be more compact, uh, more, maybe not so much pocket-sized, but a bit more focused of a strategic experience. Now, the unique thing here really has to be the visual style. This thing looks like it's been knitted and sewn with love and care, and it feels weirdly like a very cozy art style considering that you are vying for control of Rome and slaughtering your enemies. But, you know, that's what Yield is all about. Generally, it looks really good, and from what I've seen so far, gameplay is pretty solid, though they're still working on balance and stuff like that. But it could be a very nice alternative, or a little bit of a sidestep if you're waiting for Civ 7 or something like that. Good news is there is a free demo at the time of recording this video, so you can just go ahead and try Yield yourself and see if this is a nice little experience you want to get into. And then I'm gonna mention one that I've mentioned many times before and usually I would cut this out of upcoming because it's been in early access for so long, Rising Lords. This has been in early access since the middle of 2020, so we're approaching four years now. But it says that it's planning to finish by quarter four 2023, which obviously we're pretty much at the end of that now and it's not out yet. So I'm gonna expect it to continue development into 2024, but I have to imagine that Rising Lords will actually release 1.0 in 2024. But yeah, Rising Lords is a medieval turn-based strategy game with card and board game elements. You send your serfs to fight and die in your name, or you can let them prosper and use them to your advantage in more economic ways. So this is a turn-based 4X game, but with more of the analog approach to things. And I know visually this is more on the simpler side, but they do it really well. It does actually look really nice. Like just the way they use their colors feels really pleasant. But yeah, we've been watching this for a long time and there is a free demo as well. So you can just go try it in its early access state now or just try the free demo and hopefully they do stick to their schedule roughly and release soon. Then, of course, we have to mention Ara, History Untold. Build a nation and lead your people throughout history to the pinnacles of human achievement as you explore new lands, develop arts and culture, conduct diplomacy, and go head to head with your rivals to prove that you are the greatest ruler ever known. So this one was announced a little bit ago at this point, and you know, this one seems to be the most civilization-like in terms of the upcoming ahistorical 4x strategy kind of games. In this one, it is promising a dynamic living world filled with life and charm and sweeping landscapes. You build your nation across these lands and rule your way, choosing from unique leaders to represent the different nations with various playstyles. And importantly, it says that you are meant to be experiencing true simultaneous turns. Every turn, each nation's actions and choices resolve simultaneously, which means that you basically tell your orders, you put down all your orders, you end your turn, and everything runs at the same time. So there are pros and cons to this approach. We've seen this approach a couple times. You know, it does sort of take out the very annoying element in multiplayer where it's whoever clicks first to wins, which is very unfair because these turn-based 4x games are meant to be turn-based. It shouldn't require a micro. But also this simultaneous playout means that sometimes you'd tell a unit to attack another unit, but they told that unit to move, so what happens is the attack doesn't really happen. Which I suppose is maybe a bit more realistic, but also kind of annoying in a different way. I don't know. Which way do you prefer? But anyway, Ara History Untold, I mean, it looks like it's going for that realistic visual approach and, you know, at first glance, I'm not sure if it can live up and properly compete with Civilization as it stands. However, you know, we've been waiting on Civilization 7 for a long time and Ara History Untold is most likely going to slip in before that. And we have seen some gameplay at this point, but honestly not all that much. So we're gonna have to see how Ara History Untold unfolds 
over the next year. Now you can go to hell in Solium Infernum. This is a strategy game that's very much like Civilization, but it's set in hell. But also people have been saying that it feels a bit more board gamey, but not too much. It's interesting, it's interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff here. You take the infernal throne in this hellish turn-based grand strategy as the Prince of Darkness has vanished, leaving the Archfiends to conspire. And you are one of those Archfiends. You muster your legions while intoning dark sorceries, devilish schemes, and Machiavellian plots as you all vie to be the ruler of hell. The captivating thing with this game is that it is not just about military prowess, but it does everything in sort of a subversive way. The diplomacy, it's not just, oh, you can just declare war. No, no, you have to demand something and they have to refuse your demand. And then you get this casus belli to sort of have a reason to go to war. But hell has rules. You can't just conquer the whole kingdom because they wouldn't give you money. You set out saying, I'm going to take this stuff instead of the money. And then you're allowed to take that stuff and then the war's over. But then if you don't follow through on your threat, then you lose fame. And then you have to rise in the political ranks. So it's sort of like... You're trying to kill your opponents while also trying to earn their respect, which is a weird dichotomy. <laughs> and they're all trying to do the same. And everything seems to have extra layers to it. Combat has three phases with three different combat strengths, which plays into your tactics. There's spells to cast. You can spend your fame to gain extra bonuses, but you need that fame to win the game. So what do you do? There's a lot of options. Now, this did have a demo earlier in 2023, and it was an early demo, so there were some problems. I think a couple bugs, but mainly in terms of communication of what's actually actually happening. It can get very confusing because all the mechanics are playing out really weirdly and it was hard to tell what or why things were happening. Especially because all these players are having secret plots and secret happenings so sometimes things just happen and you don't realize they've happened and then what you thought was going to happen doesn't happen and then it can get very confusing and hopefully they managed to fix up the communication of what's going on. Plus it was a very limited demo and the map looked pretty bland at the time. It just sort of flat gray and hopefully they do add in more map types and more tile approaches. I know it's hell but you know we still gonna need some eye candy in the underworld. <laughs> so yeah, overall Solium Infernum seems very interesting. Some of you won't like it because it's a little bit board gamey, but it's not fully on like a board game. So I do recommend having a look at it. But right now it's just coming soon. They might have another demo in the future. The demo did feel mostly complete, so I can expect a 2024 release for Solium Infernum. Alright, then we can't talk about games like Civilization without talking about the recent Paradox announcement of Millennia. Create your own nation in Millennia, a historical turn-based 4x game that's supposed to challenge your strategic prowess across 10,000 years of history, from the dawn of humanity to our possible near futures. You'll be guiding your nation through history, as mentioned, from the nomadic caveman times to modern tech. You'll customize your nation by adopting unique nation spirits over the course of your game. So will you go the warrior route or the explorer route? Will you be a great Khan or a builder of monuments? And through all this, you'll master deep and interesting economic mechanics, where you can specialize your regions and process resources into other sorts of things. It's a civilization-like, ahistorical 4x game, but this is from Paradox, so there's a few things to talk about here. First of all, Paradox seems to be trying to take on many famous established genres and series right now, and Millennia is their take on the civilization aspect. Maybe they saw how they did with City Skylines killing SimCity, and now they want to kill a bunch of other games. <laughs> but also, Paradox means it's going to have a lot of DLC, a lot of expansions, maybe content packs, right? So 
Millennia will start out as a game and then you'll have to buy lots of little DLCs to keep it a complete game. And also, just looking at the screenshots right now, it does seem like it's got a number of interesting ideas. It does have a sort of a card system, which honestly I'm not the biggest fan of, but it seems less daunting than what they did in Civ 6. And also, visually, it doesn't give me the best of vibes right now. I mean, it's gone for that sort of realistic look, but it also looks a little maybe bland at this point, but maybe it's just the screenshots and it'll look better in motion. That tends to be the case. Now, the trailer we have right now is, you know, very sparse in terms of any kind of gameplay footage. And this is a more recent announcement, so there's no fixed release window right now, but this will be very interesting to keep an eye on as we go through 2024, because Millennia has the budget and they have the power to take on a big series like Civilization. And if they get in before Civ 7, then they could at least temporarily take the crown. And if anything, that would force Civ 7 to be better. So it's a win-win if Millennia does well. But you know, we can never really see the future. And of course, in this list, I'm gonna have to talk about Civilization 7. Not that it's been announced when it's releasing or even been revealed. All we really truly know about Civilization 7 is that it is in development. But, you know, we can only guess that it'll release in 2024. Firaxis does tend to like short announcements to release windows. I'm actually surprised they announced that they're producing Civilization 7 officially. Of course, we knew. But, you know, with Civ 6, they sort of announced it in, what, March, and then they released it by October. So I have to talk about it here, because if they are releasing in 2024, they're gonna announce it and release it probably within a six-month window, so it's hard to catch. But we really don't know all that much. Like, how are they going to take the lessons of Civ 6 and move forward? And how are they going to respond to all of these new competitors? With Ara, History Untold, and Millennia both on the way, games like Humankind and Old World having not just released, actually sort of taking up a chunk of the 4X ahistorical space. It's been a long time since Civilization has had this much competition, and maybe not ever. So what is Civilization going to do to make sure Civilization 7 keeps the crown? Now, with Civ 6, we can see that they did take some ideas from some of their competitors. The creators of Humankind earlier produced Endless Legend. The idea of districts sort of came from there, and they implemented that into Civ 6. How about art style? The Civ 6 art style got a bit controversial, everyone calling it cartoony or designed for children. I think it's gone down okay, but a lot of people, I'm sure, are hungering for that realistic art style, hence how many of these competitors are going the realistic route. Will Civilization 7 go the realistic route and try to be better than these competing games? Or will they go in a completely different art style? There's so many questions that we have in our minds, and honestly, they're very difficult to answer. Who knows what the best approach is? What would go down? well with the Civilization community. Everything is on the line for Sid Meier's Civilization, because if Civ 7 does not perform, then any of these competing games could just take the crown and potentially kill Civilization for a long time. Paradox has done it before, I'm sure they'd love to do it again, <laughs> but will Firaxis let them? Well, maybe if you go ahead and build the Oracle, we'll know. Then we have Elaborate Lands. This is one that I've been watching for a long time. It's an indie development that has been coming along very slowly, but it's starting to become a game. This is supposed to be a relaxing, turn-based strategy game combining gameplay mechanics, which is sort of 4X, a little bit of city building, and kind of puzzle builder as well. You build cities, gather resources, research technologies, and expand your territory. Different maps and biomes are supposed to offer plenty of replayability. Now, this is a game that you're supposed to be enjoying at your own pace. You know, it's not supposed to be super stressful, but that doesn't mean it's not supposed to be challenging. 
There's deep building systems, where you combine terrain features and buildings and adjacency bonuses. There's the whole goods productions, where you have to manage input and outputs to make sure things are optimized. And military is optional, so this can be an economic game if you want it to just be economics. But if you're more of the military type, then that is an option you can enable. So yeah, as I said, I've been watching this for a long time and, you know, it's sort of just kind of different and it's a bit hard to judge exactly whether it's one to recommend or not. But good news is that there is a free demo at the time of recording and you can just go check out Elaborate Lands right now and see if you like it. It is supposed to be releasing sometime in 2024, but, you know, you can have a look at the free demo and see if you want to wait for it. Okay, then we have all the RTS, the real-time strategies that I know many of you are looking forward to. And to add to this section, Rogue Command. Classic RTS gameplay fused with a modern roguelike. That is the promise of Rogue Command. You're supposed to shape your build each run by assembling an evolving arsenal of powerful units and facilities. You harvest resources, build out your bases, raise your army, and call down powerful strikes to overcome the forces threatening your survival. I have noticed that the RTS genre is either trying to go the classic route or trying to innovate with some new things, particularly roguelike and roguelite elements. And this one is trying to do both at the same time, which might be the formula that works, or it might get a bit muddled. But this one is offering over a hundred units, buildings, upgrades, hacks, there's powerful strikes and abilities. You can find crazy synergies that might make you really powerful on individual runs. Plenty of map types, plenty of enemies, and it does seem to have plenty of promise. Even if it's not quite the traditional RTS that you might be expecting, but it kind of is as well. It's another one that's hard to judge just by describing it, so another one with a free demo Rogue Command, you can go try it right now. The full release is just coming soon, but you know, try the free demo and see if this roguelike deck building RTS kinda game is the interesting sidestep that you're looking for. Next up we've got A Blight. This one is supposed to be a classic real-time strategy game set in an alternate universe where diesel punk, cyberpunk, and medieval aesthetics meet. You join the rebellion against the Zelotic Inquisition, who have been mankind's scourge for hundreds of years, and you fight a war for survival. I mean, the setting alone here is kind of really interesting. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull off mixing diesel punk, cyberpunk, and medieval aesthetics, but maybe it's kind of one of those multiverse vibes. There's supposed to be a dark and compelling lore that spans over a thousand years, three asymmetric factions with their own mechanics, playstyles, and strengths, classic real-time strategy gameplay with base building, economic growth, combat, and strategy, ground and air combat, and gameplay is supposed to be designed to be exciting and action-packed, but without relying on a need for high APM. So you shouldn't have to be clicking and pressing buttons super fast to hold your own in this game. There is PvE with a campaign and PvP with ranked matchmaking. So this is trying to be everything it's supposed to be. And it seems like it's got a lot going for it if it all comes together. At the moment, there's no release window, it's just to be announced. I think either way, this is one that is worth watching and we'll see how it turns out for a blight. In space, we have Annihilate the Spans. This is an RTS base builder with constant production and minimal micromanagement, where you direct fleets of autonomous ships in huge battles. Featuring a single-player story campaign with three playable factions, plus a roguelike game mode and level editor, as I mentioned, roguelike is a thing now, for RTS. You'll be testing your abilities in the shifting tides of the Spans. It is nice that many of these RTSs are offering single player campaigns, this one particularly with over 40 missions, because RTS for a long time was focusing on just the multiplayer and competitive aspect and I think we lost a lot in that direction in terms of good deep stories and single player experiences. This one is also promising skirmish modes, custom maps and a level editor, so there should be plenty out there if this game takes off. 
However, it is kind of a different kind of RTS. You're just making these massive amounts of units and you're not really microing much. So it's all about the macro game, managing your economy and general big picture management, which I do have a feeling that a lot of you are going to be into. This one also has a free demo, isn't it amazing? Annihilate the Spans, you can go grab a free demo right now to check it out. It is supposed to have a full release sometime towards the end of 2024, so not soon, not early in the year. Maybe might be delayed into 2025, that is very much likely. But the free demo right now can be checked out. For a pixel art RTS, we've got From Glory to Goo. This one is a sci-fi survival RTS set on an alien world. You serve as humanity's bulwark by establishing a colony and supporting your colonists still in orbit. But beware, for the goo. A relentless and shape-shifting force approaches from all sides, even above and below. So this one has that RTS vibe where you're building up a base and defending against massive waves of enemies in probably more of a they are billions kind of vibe. But it's got this kind of quirky pixel art style, which is kind of hard to describe. It's not necessarily cartoony, but it's not realistic either. It's just kind of a different kind of vibe for the pixel art. And you'll be repairing and upgrading your colony ship, sending back resources to space to allow new modules to be built, like manufacturing zones, laboratories, and an array of weaponry. There's a variety of captains that you can choose from and level up. You unlock more ships, captains, and biomes as you complete objectives. And there's multiple factions with units and buildings that you can use. So yeah, it looks like kind of a weird little quirky survival RTS. Also with a free demo. Fantastic. If you like the look of this game, you can get your hands on the free demo of From Glory to Goo. And we'll see how it goes. It is supposed to enter early access in the quarter one of 2024 with about a year to a year and a half in early access, but as they say, it's difficult to predict. But we're looking at an early access release in 2024, and then a full release maybe in 2025 if they stick to their schedule, but it could go longer for From Glory to Goo. With a bit more of a cartoony aesthetic, Nuke Them All. Supposed to be an RTS classic reborn with a twist, time is of the essence. You capture the flags, conquer the territories, and eliminate the enemy fort. And finally, at the end, you nuke them all, hence the title of the game. This is an old school sci-fi indie RTS that is promising to revive the genre's enduring allure, but that's kind of a big promise, isn't it? Now, I know the first thing that stands out here is the visual style, and I know many of you will say that it looks cartoony. But we don't have to judge a book by its cover. I mean, I'm not promising this game is going to be good or anything, but, you know, we can have a closer look. I mean, there's a lot of gameplay mechanics here. The quirkiness could be a bit refreshing from all the serious, dark, depressing worlds that we've seen. It is meant to be a difficult game, fast-paced and challenging. There's a day-night cycle with weather effects, a huge variety of worlds, maps, and missions to choose from, base building, resource collection, and the AI is supposed to be relatively competent. But you know, no one has to convince you of anything. This one can speak for itself with its free demo. Again, you can just check it out, have a look at Nuke Them All if you're just not sure about it. Like, maybe it's good, but eh, you can't quite tell. Well, there's a free demo. Have a look, try it yourself, and it's supposed to be having a full release in quarter one, 2024, sometime earlier in the year. And then, Collapsed Galaxy 2. In the distant future, humanity is divided into four factions due to ideological differences. Facing an alien invasion, the factions have to unite to defend Earth and then vie for control of the solar system. So are they friends or are they foes? You're not quite sure. So the four major factions will be controlling territories and critical supply lines. Territory battles support up to 25 versus 25 players, and that's where this RTS is trying to set itself apart. It's supposed to be a MMO RTS, which has been attempted a few times before to varying degrees of success. Because any kind of MMO or large-scale multiplayer kind of game. The main problem is you have to have a lot of people playing the game to keep it alive, right? 25 versus 25 players 
in an RTS sounds exciting, but that means you gotta get 50 people per game if you wanna get a full lobby. And that's a lot of players. Maybe Collapsed Galaxy 2 can do it. Visually it looks interesting. Not old school, but it gives old school vibes. Like it feels like the visual style, like an upgraded visual style of an old school RTS. Which, if you're older like I am, then you know what I mean, right? <laughs> Looking at the footage. But yeah, it's aiming for a 2024 release at some point, nothing specific yet. So we'll see if Collapsed Galaxy 2 can stay afloat. For a very promising one, Zero Space. This is calling itself a cinematic RTS, set within an epic sci-fi story where your decisions determine the fate of the galaxy. No two matches are meant to play the same way, because they're supposed to be nearly limitless combinations of factions, mercenary units and heroes, which is supposed to all lend itself towards being a deep experience and a good way for players to express themselves and their personal strategy. So yeah, it does look a bit like a spiritual successor to StarCraft because there are parallels we can quite clearly draw here. But there's some interesting things where it is kind of a bit of an RPG where you have dialogue choices and narrative choices to make. But it's also saying that you're able to micro without the APM, which is a thing that may or may not work. And that's one of the things where it's sort of like modern RTSs tend to try and make it a bit more accessible, make it a bit easier to get into, but that also has backfired in ways where the game just becomes a little bit too generic or boring. But maybe someone will actually figure it out and Zero Space might be the ones. I think the biggest, most important thing here is that there's a lot of focus on the campaign. A choice-driven RPG system, moral quandaries, a journey through the galaxy, Galaxy, with characters and heroes and villains across 13 main story missions, 14 hero loyalty missions and 40 side story arcs. There's a lot of single player content here, which many newer RTSs which focused on the competitive esports side tended to not quite get right if they attempted it at all. This epic single player campaign is crucial to just getting people into the game, caring about the game. And then the esports scene may grow from there. With RTS and the current times of gaming, you never know quite sure how it's gonna go. So we're gonna see how Zero Space comes along. I'm sure many of you have been waiting for Industrial Annihilation. The galaxy is at stake. You, the commander, needs to claim it. This is a sequel to Planetary Annihilation, and it's blending RTS real-time strategy from the Annihilation series of games, but this time the twist is that it's mixing in factory building. So there's conveyor belts and resource harvesting and manufacturing and processing, but it's all leading to building an army for an RTS battle. So that's an interesting twist. So you build the ultimate factory for RTS battles, where you don't train units, you make the machines that make weapons and construct vehicles that those units then go into battle. Again, good news, there is supposed to be a single player campaign for you to play through. There's multiple factions to choose from, and interestingly, they're giving you the option to unshackle the AI, so you can let the AI go all out on you to make this a really competitive experience, but you don't have to do that if you're not looking to hurt yourself. We haven't seen a super lot of this quite yet at the time of making this video, but good news, it's coming to Steam Early Access quarter 2, 2024. So by the middle of 2024, Industrial Annihilation will be playable, and then we can decide whether this is one that's going to make it. For a more fantasy approach, God's Sworn. This is a classic mythological RTS. You experience an epic fantasy retelling of the Northern Crusades, where pagan gods and their tribes clash against crusaders and armies of heaven. You choose a divine hero, rally worshippers alongside mythical creatures, and smite the unworthy. 
Many have said that this sort of kind of looks like Warcraft-ish vibes. So, you know, RTS is trying to recapture the past with modern twists. So, as you can see, these games so far are kind of trying to do that. So, we've been watching this game for a couple years at this point, but it's becoming a playable state here. There's divine heroes and abilities. You build bases and be worshipped. And there is a co-op campaign, one of the latest RTS trends, which actually is very popular, which is co-op. So a co-op campaign can be quite fun. It's also a good way to get friends into playing an RTS game together without the stress of competitive ranked ladder multiplayer. However this turns out, we won't have to wait too long for our initial judgments. It's looking at early access, quarter 1, 2024, and it might take a long time to fully release. We'll at least be able to dip our toes into God's Sworn relatively soon. Alright, then one for something that's actually kind of new. Dino Lords. This is a real-time strategy game where you gather resources, build fortifications, and command units in defense against invading Danes with their arsenal of fierce dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a twist, isn't it? I mean, at first glance, this game looks great visually, and it has that sort of 90s vibe where they just sort of threw dinosaurs into everything, probably because of Jurassic Park. It's like, oh yeah, we've got Danes fighting each other, and there's dinosaurs, because of course there are dinosaurs. <laughs> so you'll be building up your stronghold in what kind of looks to be slightly inspired by Age of Empires 4 with slight stronghold vibes. You have your units man the ramparts to defend and attack in medieval warfare. And there is a player-controlled protagonist for you to control directly. So yeah, there's a lot of traditional classic RTS elements here, but it is just kind of different. Generally, it looks very interesting at least, it could be very good, but we don't have a release window quite yet. It is planning to enter early access at some point, but nothing fixed. So we can keep an eye on Dino Lords through 2024, and maybe it'll be good, or maybe it will just be weird. Now for a proper look back, but a leap forward. Age of Mythology Retold. This is Age of Mythology, but a remake. Importantly, this is not like the other Age of Empires Definitive Editions, which are sort of remake, but mostly remaster. Age of Mythology Retold is supposed to be a remake, a new game. So you can expect significant changes to the campaign, to the graphics, to the gameplay. And that could be very good, because Age of Mythology generally has had some weird issues over the years. You know, them coming back and adding in that Chinese civilization, which the gameplay was just kind of weird and the balance has always had problems and multiplayer stability was always kind of iffy so just remaking the whole thing seems like a better idea and that's what age of mythology retold is supposed to be though we have not seen anything besides a cinematic announcement which is over a year old at this point. Though because it's been a while, there is a chance that Age Mythology Retold releases towards the end of 2024, but I just want to be clear that I'm not banking on that. It could be a 2025 release or even 2026. If there's a chance that it's going to release in 2024, I'm going to mention it here. I didn't mention it last year because I didn't expect it to be a possibility in 2023 and seems like I was right on that. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know about Age of Mythology Retold. It is in development. It is supposed to be a full remake, so a new game. And they are talking about it, but we haven't seen anything yet. Global Conflagration. This is set in an alternate future, and it's an RTS that will take you on a massive European conquest campaign. You build your base, train units, and deploy measures, and call in airstrikes to destroy your opponents. In this one, you can expect a traditional base building system, infantry squads, a balanced and unique set of land units for each faction, aircrafts and helicopters, and deployable measures to support your units. Kind of like, I don't know, like god abilities, I guess, but, you know, in a militaristic approach. 
This is one that we have been looking at for a number of years and it's been coming along slowly. It is planning to enter early access at some point and they're saying it'll be at least two years in early access. So we're not going to get a full release in 2024, but it's starting to look kind of ready based on the new trailers and new footage coming out. And there's been demos here and there. So I can sort of expect a 2024 early access release release and then full release will be 2026. You'll be in for the long haul if you jump into global conflagration. But whatever it takes to make a good RTS, take your time, get it right. We've been waiting on this one and I'm just hoping that it does turn out as good as the trailers make it look. And then we've got Red Chaos The Strict Order. This is supposed to be a classic and modern real-time strategy game that offers a variety of strategic aspects based on the strengths and weaknesses of individual units and it's supposed to be balanced despite the vast differences of units and factions. Balance is always a problem. I don't think any RTS can be perfectly balanced but some are more balanced than others. Another traditional RTS that we're looking at here with gathering of resources, building of bases and producing units. So that that's what most people are looking for right now, we just need a good one. And there is a campaign, but this one has a big focus on multiplayer with up to six players. But it also says fun is guaranteed for everyone, and I think that kind of depends on your personality. <laughs> fun in competitive multiplayer RTS, I think, yeah, that's not for everyone. They're trying. This is another that we've seen somewhat over the last couple of years and it was looking very rough last year. But this time they've got some new trailers, new gameplay footage and it's looking a lot better than last time. So this is starting like I was not confident about Red Chaos The Strict Order and now I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll have to see how it turns out. There's no current release window for the game. Based on what we're looking at, it seems like a high potential for a 2024 release. But we'll see what Red Chaos A Strict Order brings to the table. Now, there are many Command & Conquer inspired games here, but this one is Dying Breed. Just at a glance, this looks like a Command & Conquer mod, but it is a new game and despite the visual style looking almost identical, it is completely new graphics and new gameplay and everything. This is supposed to be a Golden Age RTS classic, or at least styled to be one. Fast-paced action, strategic decision-making, battling evil arch-enemies, zombies, and retro-futuristic technologies, all to a 90s electro-metal soundtrack and FMV live-action cutscenes, with what I think is so-so acting but that somehow fits the universe, it just works somehow. <laughs> I kind of miss FMV acting and it's nice that some people are actually trying to do it again. This is clearly a throwback to the original Command & Conquer but with modernizations and a slightly different story with more mission variety and modernized gameplay and all of the nice new features that we have today but in a classic pixel art RTS. I played the demo for this and it is actually kind of fun, but it was a very vertical slice demo, what I've tried anyway. This has been in development for a number of years. It's another one which looks like it's really coming along and it's been picked up by a publisher, which is another throwback name, which obviously it's not the same people as it was back then, but apparently the brand is still around, Microprose. You know, I know Microprose from publishing Civilization 2, but here Microprose is publishing Dying Breed. So this is a throwback in more ways than expected. Anyway, it's a very interesting and surprisingly fun. And if you're looking for a proper throwback to the original Command & Conquer, then have a look at Dying Breed. Now, a lot of people have been excited for this one, Dorf RTS. Take command of one of three unique factions and conquer your enemies in a twisted vision of the future. Construct sprawling bases, scour the land for resources to mine and refine, and assemble powerful armies of land, air and sea units 
to smash your adversaries. You'll need to construct infrastructure, building massive bases of factories, refineries, and defensive structures. You gather the spoils of war, pumping oil, mining ore, gathering scrap and all of that. And you'll be sending a multitude of units to storm enemy bases, capturing their factories to gain access to their technologies, and then you can mix and match their strengths to your own to form the perfect army. This is one that we have been watching for a couple years, and it was another one that was looking very rough just a year ago. But their new trailer really seems to be shaping things up. It's looking pretty good. It has that gritty 90s aesthetic, late 90s I suppose, and of course it does have that retro RTS vibe, but, but more Red Alert than Tiberian Dawn. There's no particular release window right now, so you can keep an eye on Dorf and see if it's the one for you. For one that's totally not inspired by Dune, Barkan. A harsh sand planet has become the stage for a brutal war between three great clans. For the power over rare minerals, each want to prove their superiority. In the heat of dynamic battles with the enemy's troops, you have to prepare to face and attack giant sand snakes. <laughs> yes, Barkin does sound very familiar. If we're not gonna get Dune 3000, then maybe Barkin will be good. This has been in development for a little bit, but not out yet. However, at the time of recording, there is a free demo you can try on Steam, so you can just jump in and try it out. See the harsh sand planet and the sand snakes for yourself and the rare minerals. And generally, it seems to be shaping up. Will it be an actual spiritual successor, its own thing, or maybe it'll be a bit dry? We'll see how it goes for Barkin. Okay, now I want to mention one that's been on and off for a while. Liquidation. This is an action-packed RTS where you take the role of a commander and bring back balance to the war-torn world of Vea. This one really does sort of feel like a mix between Warcraft and Starcraft, but the developer has been having some complications over the years. I actually tried the demo for this a long time ago, a year, two years ago maybe? And it showed some promise, but then development kind of slowed down, there were some issues. But then the developer came back in, continued working on it, and now it's pretty much back in production. The latest update says Skirmish AI is complete, so that's quite, uh, that's quite promising. Skirmish AI, that's not the easiest thing to implement, and Liquidation now apparently has it. Considering its history, it may take forever to release. It is planning some kind of early access release. However, when, who knows. But the estimate right now, it's saying the full release of the game is supposed to be in the second half of 2024. Full release, so early access has to be early 2024. That is just a statement though. Always remember, a release date is not a release date, it's a picture of a release date. It doesn't mean it's gonna release on that date. Delays happen. And liquidation is one that's prime to be delayed. Maybe the developer will pull it off and actually be able to stick to that schedule. Liquidation, maybe 2024. Going very alien, Space Tales. This is an RTS set in a retro-futuristic environment where you take the role of a commander in the Intergalactic Planetary Expansion, the IPE, and you immerse yourself in a thrilling mission to explore and conquer new planets, pushing the boundaries of the human empire. Here you unravel a gripping storyline where you embody the character of Xander, that name sounds familiar, and you embark on an adventure filled with 16 main missions. You encounter a myriad of diverse alien races, you discover wondrous worlds, you unlock research points, you meet intriguing characters, and you unveil the secrets of the IPE and your true destiny. Base building is a little different here with hub technology, and generally it looks looks kind of interesting, kind of unique, but also a weird throwback visually to the 90s era of gaming. There's something modern about it, but also something very nostalgic about how this game looks. It looks like something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. What do you think this game looks like? Either way, there is a free demo for you to try at the time of making this video, so you can go ahead and have a closer look at Space Tales and see if you want to get into it when it fully releases. For some 3D pixels we call voxels, Heart of Muriet. 
This is a voxel RTS game set in the fabled lands of Muriet. With a focus on strategy over unit micromanagement, you'll build settlements, research powerful magic, and manage bands of warriors while on your quest to restore your house to its former glory. Now, I know voxels are not your favorite art style here. I mean, some of you I'm sure love pixel art, but generally speaking, the RTS community isn't always into voxels, even less so than pixel art. It doesn't look that bad. Color-wise and design-wise, there's a lot to look at here and it's not bad on the eyes. This one is fantasy, so there's elves, dwarfs, mages, and there's four schools of magic. It's promising easy unit control, so micro is not supposed to be an issue here, and you're supposed to focus on the strategy and decision making. There is also a map editor for people to make new maps and tell new stories, and there is, of course, the story campaign to play through, so a nice single player campaign. Generally, this seems like an easier one for RTS players to get into, so if you haven't played an RTS for a long time or you have friends who don't play RTS or you've never played an RTS then this one seems like it's a bit of an easier one to get into not too hardcore but still has a lot to it so could be good there is a free demo as well for Heart of Muriet. Isn't it great free demos are just the norm now? So you can try the demo and judge for yourself if Heart of Muriet has any depth. Speaking of pixel art, TFC the Fertile Crescent this is an RTS that I have mentioned for a few years now, but it's just something that's really kind of nice to look at and see exist. This is sort of like Age of Empires 1, but kind of a demake because it's even more pixel art. But also your village has a bit more survival elements where you need to keep food up or people starve. So it's kind of like how a lot of people actually played Age of Empires 1 in a kind of roleplay way, but it's actually mechanics here. But this is supposed to be a competitive multiplayer RTS. You build up your village slash base, you gather resources, you expand, and you fight for survival in the Near East Bronze Age, the golden age of human urbanization. And this is such a competitive game that there are actually multiplayer tournaments ongoing right now as this game is in early access. Having said that, it's been in early access since early 2022, so it's been over a year, and the initial plan was for it to stay in early access for at least one year, and it's gonna be two years at this point. So I don't want to mention this game every year forever, but there's a good chance that this does actually release in 2024, but we'll see how much further the Fertile Crescent will go from its initial release window. Then, a remake of one of my favorite old games, Empire of the Ants. Yes, this is an ant RTS, but no, it's not that one. It's not the one that we've been playing for so long. Empire of the Ants is actually an old game that I played, and I wish I could get it running again, but I just can't figure it out. It's got this weird thing where it doesn't understand modern GPUs. Even in, like, virtual machines, it gets confused. So I can't get Empire of the Ants running, as in the game from the year 2000. However, that game was published by Microids, and this is published by Microids, so it's the same publisher remaking one of their old classic games and I'm kind of hyped for it. This is an ant RTS so you're building up an ant colony fighting other ants and other bugs and there's an epic adventure where you are a brave ant in third person but it is an RTS game as well. Exploring gorgeous looking environments in a photorealistic approach using Unreal Engine 5 and there's day night cycles and season changes which affect gameplay. It just looks looks so good. It seems like such an old school take, but such a new school take as well. Now we haven't seen all that much gameplay, but the release date is set for 2024, so it must be relatively well along. And I'm just sort of excited for this more because I can't get the original game running, so maybe this will feel the same, but better, hopefully. I just really miss Empire of the Ants, so maybe in 2024 I can play Empire of the Ants. And then for a game from Petroglyph, the old Command & Conquer developers in their new company, this one is called 9-Bit Armies, a bit too far. This is a voxel RTS, which I know what you think about voxels, but you lead a modern military, build bases, unlock units, and attack in all-out war, engaging on land, sea, and air in over 30 missions, online skirmishes, or co-op. 
And it's supposed to be easy to learn but difficult to master, which is sort of the tagline of almost every other RTS out there. Easy to learn but a challenge to master, right? I mean, that's sort of a philosophy in the RTS genre and sometimes it works out, sometimes not so much. It either becomes too easy or too complex. But this is taking the classic approach. So there's two single player campaigns spanning 30 missions. You can conquer the campaign in co-op. There's supposed to be a competent AI to fight against classic base building, destructible environments because it is a voxel world, mod support, which is very interesting. If the community explodes, then we could get a lot more content. And it is from Petroglyph, which generally has been pushing RTSs their entire careers, considering Grey Goo and the remastered Command and Conquer collection, which they worked on. This one is mostly interesting because of who's making it. What they'll bring to a voxel world will be fascinating to see how much they stick to what they know and how much they move forward. Will they truly go a bit too far or not far enough? We'll find out in 9-bit armies set to release sometime in 2024. All right, I'm gonna mention the game that everyone keeps asking me to mention. Mana Lords. Yes, yes, I know Mana Lords. No, I didn't forget Mana Lords. Basically, every list I make, no matter the genre, someone asks for Mana Lords. Oh, here's the city building list. You forgot Mana Lords. Oh, here's the RTS list. You forgot Mana Lords. Oh, here's the base building list. Where's Mana Lords? Like, should I be listing Mana Lords in every single genre? <laughs> Look, I'm hyped for Mana Lords. It looks phenomenal. It's a medieval strategy game with in-depth city building and large-scale tactical battles in real time and a complex economy and social simulations. And it's got phenomenal graphics. And I played the demo and it is somehow super awesome optimized, like it was buttery smooth despite seeing every single blade of grass, zooming in and out had no lag, mana lords, everyone's hyped for it, but I can't list it in every single genre. I'm already putting it in two genres, which is the city building list and the RTS list, which also of course will be in any strategy list. But yes, we've watched mana lords for years. Yes, it had a demo and I played that too. I've got a video on it. It looks great. It plays great. I'm loving it so far. And it is actually set to release this time. 26th April 2024. So we should be getting a released version of Mana Lords early on in the year in 2024. And then maybe I can stop listing it as an upcoming game so people can stop asking for it. But you know, I bet even after Mana Lords releases and I stop listing it as an upcoming game, people will be like, where's Mana Lords? It got an update. <laughs> yes, we know about Mana Lords and I didn't forget it. Here it is, okay? It's releasing soon. We can all hold our breath and see if it really does deliver on all of their promises. For another one that people always ask me to list, Beyond All Reason, Bar. This is basically a large-scale, massive sci-fi battle simulator where all projectiles are simulated in real time and there's ballistics and terrain deformation and it's a huge RTS epic experience in the struggle for domination. Terrain plays a huge part here, no two maps will play out the same, radar can't penetrate mountains, nuclear warfare will physically alter the terrain, there's 10 different unit classes and you can have experimental units, which just really opens up the possibility for strategies and a total of over 400 units, which makes it practically infinite with the possibility of tactics. Now, this is basically a community-driven project. It's not a published game or anything like that. It's just been in development for years and years, and it recently had some massive updates. Over the past year, a massive graphics update, and there's so much more content being added into it. And it is still technically an alpha, but, you know, I, it's hard to tell how long it'll be in alpha and how much more there will be. Beyond all reason, B-A-R, it is a very impressive development and I'm gonna mention it again here just so you know that it is still in development, but you can play it in 2024. In a similar vein, Sanctuary Shattered Sun. This is another epic scale, traditional RTS, which has strategic zooms, streaming economies, simulated projectiles, and a grand scale. 
where you take control of armies and hundreds upon hundreds of units and you crush your enemies. This is one that I maybe listed a bit too early in previous years. Through 2023, there were playable demos at events, which means that this is becoming pretty much a game. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that possibly could release in 2024. There's no fixed release window or release date. And honestly, a year ago, the trailer footage was laggy and rather incomplete looking. But now it does look like a game, which is promising. And I can see some kind of release over the next year in 2024. Maybe 2025, since some people have actually tried this game at event booths then we do actually know it is a real game. The main concern here will be performance. It says they allow up to 10,000 units in a single match, which is huge. Will that just lag everyone's computers or have they figured it out? The maps are 40 by 40 kilometers, so it's huge battlegrounds as well to fit those 10,000 units. There's weather control, there's super weapons, and it is the future and everything wants to kill everything. So Sanctuary Shattered Sun, very promising, very exciting. We'll see if they can do it. Now for the Command & Conquer successor, which I think every Command & Conquer fan is waiting for. Tempest Rising. You command one of three distinct factions in a desperate struggle for power and resources. It's a classic RTS set on Earth after a nuclear war, with a new rare mineral to harvest, bases to build, units to control, and near future technologies. This has a free demo, and I played some of it, and it looks pretty good. Visually amazing, no notes. Gameplay wise, it was sort of uh, working, it sort of felt a bit weird, but kind of actually was nice. Needed some work, but it was early times. Each faction offers a unique roster of units. There will be two single player campaigns with between mission cutscenes. It's also promising skirmish, custom games and ranked multiplayer with ELO ratings. So this is going to be an RTS as we know it. And it's trying to deliver huge promises on every front. The all important single player campaign and the competitive multiplayer with cinematic cutscenes that look phenomenal so far. And it needs to be very cool and slightly cheesy and it seems to be actually working. So go try the demo for Tempest Rising and let me know what you think. Is it really going to not just live up to Command & Conquer? Lots of games kind of sort of live up to Command & Conquer, but will this actually surpass it? Will it actually feel like the next Command & Conquer? Because I don't think we're getting a new Command & Conquer game unless maybe it's a mobile game. We didn't even get remasters of all the existing Command & Conquer games. We just got like two of them. There's so many more games out there to be remastered, but no, we got two. So right now, Tempest Rising is the biggest hope for Command & Conquer fans, and it will either deliver and we'll all be very happy, or it won't deliver and we'll all be very disappointed. For one that's had its share of controversy and ups and downs, Homeworld 3. I was recently sponsored by Homeworld 3, so I'm just gonna be factual with this one. It is the next Homeworld game. It's a space RTS where you don't so much have a base, but you have a mothership, which by the way, if you've seen it horizontal, you can rotate it to be vertical like the days of old. So don't freak out if you see a horizontal mothership. There's no up in space, but you can make your spaceship face up. One of the main changes for Homeworld 3 this time is that there is terrain in the form of derelict space spaceships and I suppose asteroids and stuff like that so it's not just a 3D space that's big and open it's 3D space with stuff in it which does affect the gameplay quite significantly. So it's been coming along we've had some better looks at gameplay and it's set for a February 2024 release window so Homeworld 3 will be releasing relatively soon and you can see quite a bit of gameplay of it already after many years of no real gameplay being shown off. So we kind of know what it looks like, what it plays like. You can go have a look at it. It's meant to have a single player campaign. There is War Games co-op mode, which is sort of a rogue light short co-op missions, PVP with AI or online against other players and mod support. So yeah, that's Homeworld 3. What do you think? Moving on to probably the most hyped RTS ever, 
Stormgate. This is supposed to be the next-gen real-time strategy game, set in a science fantasy universe, and it's by Frost Giant Studios, which is basically ex-Blizzard StarCraft devs. And generally, it sort of feels like StarCraft plus Diablo in an RTS, and they've had massive funding for this game. Last I saw, over $20 million. There's mechs, and demons, there's supposed to be an ever-evolving single-player campaign, co-op missions, AI, online ladders. They say it's supposed to be the first truly social RTS. And importantly, I think I should mention that it is going to be free to play, but they are promising not pay to win. So make of that what you will. And there will be an editor to create custom missions, mini games, and basically that user generated content, sort of like the StarCraft arcade, you know, which is very popular and leads to entirely new games being developed. So I think the important thing to note here is Stormgate is trying to have everything, all of it. There's supposed to be something for everyone. And that is the biggest promise you can make and the hardest one to keep. How do you make all of it, everything, as good as it needs to be? All of it up to par, nothing lacking. That's insane. With all the backing they have and all the experience they have, maybe Stormgate can do it. Maybe. Who knows? There have been some closed betas and show-offs and stuff like that. There's no fixed release window, but because we've been seeing it for a while and gameplay has been revealed and they're talking a lot about it, there is a chance that it releases, at least in some form, in 2024. They might release the campaign in chapters, who knows? But I would not be surprised if Stormgate releases in 2024. However, of course, it could be 2025 or 2026. You never know with these things. But this is an upcoming RTS list, so if I don't mention Stormgate, people will get very mad. So here you go. At Stormgate, it's supposed to be everything. Next up, I want to mention Stronghold Unreal. Stronghold Unreal is supposed to be the next Stronghold game from Firefly Studios. Now, I was also recently sponsored to look at Stronghold Definitive Edition, so I will try and stay factual on this one as well. Mainly because we don't really know anything about Stronghold Unreal besides the fact that it's supposed to be in the Unreal Engine, and it's the next mainline Stronghold game. What you're seeing on screen right now is Stronghold Definitive Edition, which released to good reviews. It generally has everything that people asked for except for a skirmish AI, so make of that what what you will. Now we don't know if Stronghold Unreal will release in 2024, we actually don't know much about it at all. There is a possibility of it being revealed and released in 2024, so I will mention it here. Mainly because when they released Stronghold Definitive Edition, they couldn't do everything they wanted with that because they said most of the team was on Stronghold Unreal, and it was actually a very small team working on Stronghold Definitive Edition. So through all of this that's been going on, Stronghold Unreal has been the focus at Firefly Studios. They have a lot under the hood. It just depends whether they open the hood sooner or later. And while we're talking about some older RTSs revived, Battle Realms Zen Edition. This is not a remake or a remaster. Battle Realms is an old RTS set in sort of an Asian mythological world that was a favorite of many. And the developer in 2019 decided, well, no one's going to fund a sequel or anything like that. So I'm just going to take the game and release it again on Steam, but it's in development again. And I'm not sure if there's any other game that really has done this, where you take the game that released ages ago and then release it into early access as it's back in development to try and modernize it. It's sort of weird. It's like you take an old game and then you release it into early access decades later as it were works on remastering or remaking itself. But either way, Battle Realms Zen Edition was really rough for a couple years. But a while ago, it got kind of good and it more recently got huge updates that has really sort of rebalanced the game, restabilized the multiplayer, there's new maps, there's a little bit of new content, but it's mostly the same game, but it's just kind of different and better now. So if you like Battle Realms from the past, then Battle Realms Zen Edition is sort of just the better way to play it right now. But also, if you've never tried Battle Realms, then I can highly recommend trying the Zen edition of it. 
Progress is rather slow. It's been in early access since the end of 2019, so it's been many years. But I thought I should just mention it here because this RTS list sort of has that vibe of recapturing the glory days. And many people say Battle Realms looks a lot like Warcraft 3, and I just want to point out that Battle Realms released before Warcraft 3. Go have a look at Battle Realms Zen Edition. Moving to the next subgenre. Real-time grand strategy games. In the Industrial Revolution, we have Gilded Destiny. This is a grand strategy game depicting the transformative era of the Industrial Revolution. You take the helm of a country of your choice and transform it from a backward agrarian society to an industrial powerhouse. There's a massive globe for you to play on, which consists of over 1 million plus hexagons with distinct biomes, terrains, and weather patterns reflecting the real world. There's an intricate global supply and demand simulation. It is pausable real time. There's simulation of population, culture, migration, assimilation. There's even elements of some city building and factory construction. And you'll be able to define and execute your leadership in your own specific strategy determining policies in terms of economics, labor, social, diplomatic, and military, all while making technological breakthroughs to advance your people. And there is also an editor for the world, so you can mod this game and create your own little worlds for you to play on with Steam Workshop support. So this is a game where if it takes off, there'll be extra content from the community. This does seem very interesting, and it's promising so much simulation, which would be great if it does do it. It looks great, and if Gilded Destiny does deliver on all its promises of simulation, then this could be a really interesting grand strategy. Now it's aiming for a 2024 release at the moment, there's plenty of dev diaries as they develop through the game, and hopefully they do deliver on all of their promises. Next we've got King's Orders. This is a more simplified historical grand strategy game, with some innovations. You command your armies by sending letters with orders. Messengers will actually travel and deliver these letters, and they can be lost or intercepted. But your generals will only execute the orders once they receive the letters, and send you reports of what happened the same way. So this is a grand strategy game which is a little bit scaled down, so it's like mini grand, but this idea of actually delivering orders with letters is kind of how it used to really work. You don't just, you know, float in the sky and click on your generals and tell them what to do. You actually have to come up with what you want to do and send the command out. And sometimes those commands don't reach their destinations. And I think that's a very interesting twist on the grand strategy genre. Now, this game is set in medieval Europe, from frozen Scandinavia to the deserts of Africa. Your goal is to claim new territories, expand your influence, and there are unique scenarios you can play out as well. But it really all comes down to your overall grand strategy as Monarch. Trying to time your orders to go out with letters and traversal times, it's just a whole nother layer for you to consider. So although King's Orders does scale down a little bit on the grand strategy side, it adds in more complication on another front, which at least brings us a new kind of game-ish. Now there's no set release window right now, but development has been coming along, so we should see a lot more of King's Order going through the year. Espiocracy. This is an espionage grand strategy game where you lead the intelligence agency of one of 74 playable countries. Rewrite history from the shadows as you influence ideologies, stage coups, and wage proxy wars. Subterfuge takes center stage as you establish a new world order. In this game, the world is recovering from the devastation of World War II, and everything is in turmoil. You'll have to prepare for nuclear brinkmanship, the space race, decolonization, and the instability 
that generally the world is balancing on a knife's edge. You will, however, be able to deploy foreign and domestic agents to manipulate public opinion, support and establish political factions, stoke the flames of independence, and shatter the status quo. There's a lot to this, as there tends to be with grand strategy games. You make use of 34 different types of operations that you can do across the world. Agents will act with relative autonomy based on your orders. And you will have to manage things like budgets and your staff across a variety of nations, which are affected by the various geopolitical and socioeconomic circumstances. This game does take the grand strategy genre in a slightly different direction, where usually it's all about war and, you know, military action and stuff like that. Or at least games that would center around that as a core mechanic. But here it is about diplomacy, about espionage. It is about creating situations that will lead to what you want in the world. So espiocracy might be what you're looking for. At least it's a fresh take. But if you want more war, don't worry, we've got more of that in the list. For now, espiocracy is aiming for a 2024 release window, but nothing specific yet. And then we have Fragile Existence. Save humanity from the brink of extinction in this sci-fi strategy game of survival. You travel among the stars to seek out resources, establish and develop colonies to sustain civilization, and you grow your military might to push back against an overwhelming threat. Grand strategy in space can be exciting or it can be a bit of a grind. But in this game, you are fleet commander of what remains, really. And it's up to you to make sure humanity can survive. You scout ahead to plot a course through the systems. You'll be organizing your fleet for optimal results. And it's all going to be centered around a battle for resources. Each planet you come across holds potential risks and rewards. And you'll actually be sending down ground expeditions which are directly under your control. So you do actually go down to the planet's surface where you must lead your people. And then you can pacify planets shift resources around as needed, and overall resist extinction because it's space, everything's trying to kill you. So at first glance, this does seem like just a fleet command kind of game, but it gets more complicated and advanced and deep as you go along. You also have to strive for technological supremacy, redesign ships, and just managing your civilization through all these stars seems like it's just gonna be a huge monumental task. You know, and at the end of the day, sometimes you just can't cope and you do just have to escape. So tactical retreat is always an option. Also, fun point, mod support is a thing. A planet editor as well. So if this game takes off, the community can make more stuff. Which we'll have to wait and see if they can actually do that. Right now, Fragile Existence is aiming for a 2024 release. We'll see if they manage to pull it off. We've got Ultimate General American Revolution. This is a sandbox strategy game featuring an epic historical period during the rebellion of the American colonies against the British Empire. You take on the role of the American colonists and you'll be fighting for territorial control over North America. It's a real-time campaign where you can build your army and navy, you'll be constructing military infrastructure, and you'll have full command of your armies on a regimental level. But it also says you can zoom in and fight massive battles on a battalion level, so you can fight and command how you want in this game. Now, a little bit like King's Orders, there is delayed reporting here where Realistic reconnaissance is simulated, so messages take time to be delivered before you actually know what's happening. And they can be intercepted or delayed by the enemy. So sometimes your orders will not reach your troops in time or at all. Now besides your army and fleet, you will need to build and manage military infrastructure. You'll have to keep your troops supplied. You'll be developing your headquarters to keep your army functional. And you need to manage funds and allocate them to the right departments to make sure everything runs as smoothly as possible. 
Now, this is from the developers of some other Ultimate General games, including Civil War and Dreadnoughts, and they've all been quite positively reviewed. So if you've been into those other games, then this just might be the thematic twist that you've been waiting for. But if you haven't played the others, then maybe this one will be for you. I mean, I suppose if you're into the historical period of the American Revolution, then yeah, this is going to be right up your alley. It's looking to have an early access release sometime in 2024, and it's supposed to be an early access for around half a year. It could get a full release in 2024, probably late 2024, but it might only get a full full release in 2025, but it depends when it releases into early access. Already in early access, World Warfare and Economics. In this game, you control any country in the world. You have their politics, economy, and military in your hands, and you shape your own version of World War III, a global pandemic, or create a custom scenario. You can even explore up to 66 planets and conquer through war or diplomacy. So generally, this game sounds kind of crazy. It does say you can lead any of the 220 countries slash colonies including some disputed ones. You manage every aspect of the economy. Battles are large-scale wars in real time. You'll be advancing your country's technologies with more than 300 technologies to master. And you will actually be able to explore the universe traveling through space and sending probes, rovers, and crews to other planets across the universe and win international space races. All the while, on the political side, you'll be winning elections, forming coalitions, and fostering support from other political parties within your country. Though it does say the political stuff is optional for those who love politics. So generally, this game does just seem like it has a little bit of everything, and it's hard to fit it all into a short overview video like this. So, you know, this game is already in early access, with mostly positive user reviews on Steam, over 70% positive. And it went into early access right at the end of 2023, and it's looking for around a year in early access. So it is aiming for a 2024 full release. With a game as complicated as this, it could go into 2025. Since it's in early access, you can have a closer, more in-depth look at world warfare and economics and see if this game is for you. Traveling to the 1500s, Renaissance Kingdom Wars. This is a grand strategy and RTS hybrid where you play one of a hundred characters across medieval Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. You start as a landless mercenary captain, and you fight your way to become a minor lord, rising up through the kingdom's hierarchy and eventually being crowned and fighting to expand your kingdom. So you start small and grow big in this one. You'll be building your cities, waging your wars, and serving your king until you become king, and experiencing siege combat with what they call brutal battles. Interestingly, you can get up close and personal. You can enter towns and do some city building, constructing individual buildings and walls and positioning your troops for RTS elements. But at the same time, you can manage everything from the world map for a grander scale. And the world map itself is supposed to be huge, with dozens of kingdoms and over 500 towns and hamlets to start the game in. Then of course, as with many of these grand strategy historical games, the world just changes over time, so you need to adapt and figure out how you're going to make your way through and survive, really. So, Renaissance Kingdom Wars. It looks really interesting. And just the level of detail you can zoom in and do with your cities and the whole mix with RTS, it does make it sound like a very active kind of game. But we'll find out more when it releases into early access. They're looking at quarter one, 2024, for early access. And it's only supposed to last several months with a promise to release in 2024, but we'll see how that goes. Quite often, games which plan only a few months in early access, they tend to go much longer. So maybe a full release in 2024 for Renaissance Kingdom Wars, but maybe not. With a similar flavor, but scaling down a bit, Small Kingdoms. I know it's kind of weird talking about small kingdoms in a grand strategy game, well, this is a game where you rule a small fantasy kingdom and conquer your rivals as you build up cities and armies on a world map and command troops on the battlefield. So it pretty much is a grand strategy game. 
it's just more streamlined. And there is the RTS element, which seems to be a popular trend in the real-time grand strategy genre right now. And there's procedurally generated world maps and campaigns that you can complete in a weekend. For a grand strategy, a weekend to complete a game is actually kind of short. <laughs> <laughs> but for many other games, you know, a couple days to finish one game, that's a long time. But this is the grand strategy genre. You'll be playing as one of the many kingdoms with their own set of islands and cities. The cities themselves, you'll be constructing buildings, gathering resources and training units to garrison and conquer. And you can specialize them into like economic powerhouses or basically military camps. And your armies will be composed of what you want. And you can command them directly on the battlefield so you can use your superior tactics to overcome your enemies. Generally, I think this is a nice little game. I mean, the grand strategy genre already has these massive games that take dozens of hours to even learn the basics and you have to dedicate thousands of hours to even come close to mastering them. So if you've been daunted by this subgenre of strategy games then maybe you could start in small kingdoms or maybe you've just got a job and you really want to play a grand strategy but you just don't have the time then you know there's small kingdoms. Back into space, Terra Invicta. From the creators of Long War, an alien invasion has fractured humanity into seven ideological factions, each with a unique vision for the future. Lead your chosen faction to take control of Earth's nations, you expand across the solar system and battle enemy fleets in tactical combat. Of the seven factions you can choose from, their names pretty much give their ideology away. The Resistance, Humanity First, The Servants, The Protectorate, The Academy, the Initiative, and Project Exodus. Yes, Project Exodus do plan to build a massive starship and flee the solar system. Now, whichever way you go about this, you'll be investigating the alien threat from early sightings and UFO crash sites. But eventually you're gonna get rampaging alien megafauna and robotic armies, so things are going to escalate here. The game also has a global research system that creates opportunities both for competition and cooperation between the factions. There will be geopolitics across the world. You'll have your council of politicians, scientists and operatives doing your business. Bidding, and you'll want to try and convert the people of the world to your ideology so you get more support and power. Now beyond Earth, you'll be building space stations and shipyards and fuel depots. And because it's space, the map is constantly shifting as celestial bodies orbit the sun. So your space stations and all of those space military bases are also moving through 3D space, which will have some effects on how things work. Eventually, you will colonize space, design spaceships, and fight in space warfare. Also, good point, this is built for mods, so they are planning for community content and for modders to create their own visions. So it sounds really exciting. This game has actually been in early access since late 2022, so it's been over a year now. And it's got very positive reviews at 80% positive right now. However, it was only supposed to be an early access for several months. They did say, but possibly longer, but yeah, that, that's what I mean by games that plan for several months in early access, generally, they take much longer. And yeah, one point seems to be that the early game and the late game are basically two different games, so you might prefer the early game or the late game by itself and not like the whole game. Which seems to be a sticking point for some people who try this game. But you know, have a closer look at it if you're intrigued and maybe Terra Invicta will be the whole package for you. And then for another genre mix, Kaiser Punk. This game is very interesting because it seems to be combining city building and grand strategy well, they're trying to make it seamlessly. And that seems to be the trend with a lot of grand strategies these days where it's trying to mix in other genres, particularly RTS or city building. And in Kaiserpunk, you're supposed to build and conquer in an alternative 20th century world. You engage in battle on land, sea and air, and you use your economic power to emerge as the ultimate victor. So you'll be shaping your own city-state from the ground up, where every street, factory and skyline is up to you. You unlock new buildings and building upgrades, 
You build on ground and on water, and new tech is unlocked depending on how you build your city. On the grand strategy side, there's over a hundred regions to be conquered and exploited. Each region comes with its own bonuses and penalties, so you gotta choose where you wanna go. And you'll be assembling your armies to take on the rival factions of the world on land, sea, and air. There's also production chains and logistics, where there's over a hundred various resources to mine, farm, refine, and manufacture, and you have to get things around with transportation networks and trade. Overall, it's a game of choices. You're going to be choosing things at every step of the way, and if you make the wrong choices, you may be stripped of your power. I mean, personally, this seems very, very promising. It looks really nice to look at, actually. As a City Builder fan, this might be the in point for getting into grand strategies and just scaling up that gameplay. But you know, it really comes down to how it's all executed. And right now, Kaiserpunk is just looking at a 2024 release at some point. Nothing specific yet, but I am personally very curious of what Kaiserpunk is gonna be at the end of the day. Alright, the next subgenre are tactical, tactics games, turn-based and real-time. So first, there's capes. Superheroes clash in a turn-based strategy game. You recruit, train and deploy your team in order to take back the city from the villains that hold it hostage. 20 years ago, the supervillains won, and since then they've created a dystopian city where developing superpowers is a crime. So obviously, we're all criminals now, but also the heroes. The game takes place across a series of campaign and patrol missions, and you can choose to push forward with the story or take your time to explore the side missions and unlock more heroes, earning skill points and completing challenges, and learning more about your heroes' lives along the way. A superhero tactical game does sound exciting. There is a free demo aiming for a 2024 release, but nothing specific. So you can build up your superhero team, upgrade your powers, and challenge your heroes. For a highly anticipated one, Commando's Origins. You have been selected for a mission which will shape the fate of the entire world. Witness the very beginning of the legendary elite World War II force in this sequel that has been long awaited, because the Commando series does go back a long way. So this is a real-time tactics game, where you engage in daring raids, covert sabotage, or courageous rescue missions. This one is meant to be challenging, and you will be assembling an extraordinary team featuring six infamous characters, each with their own storied history, and you band together to form this fighting force. Through the missions, there are meant to be many paths to victory. Detailed and interactive environments allow multiple approaches, where you can sneak, climb, and even drive various vehicles, or you can hide and creep your way. But you know, guns blazing is always a valid strategy. With your team, you're supposed to control them with precise and intuitive controls, being able to coordinate complex actions simultaneously, which you will need to do because you'll be fighting on all fronts, from the barren Arctic to the African desert. Also, as a fun note, there's two-player cooperative multiplayer. You can play either online or on local split screen, which is a nice option. Commando's Origins, it's got a lot of promise and it has a big reputation to live up to. It's only slated for a 2024 release right now, sometime in the year, nothing specific yet, and it better live up to expectations, otherwise a lot of people are gonna be very disappointed. Next tactics game, Cyber Knight's Flashpoint. This is a squad tactics heist RPG kind of game. You're supposed to be employing clever stealth, strategic combat, unique 23rd century cyberpunk, all in a unique 23rd century cyberpunk game. You build your crew of hackers, mercs, and malcontents, and their stories become interwoven with your own as you play through the game. You will be utilizing powerful cyberware, there's faction connections, and you have to use everything at your disposal to outsmart the odds and determine your future. Big promises here are deep character builds with lots of customization, dynamic stories and characters that evolve as you explore everything, and generally it looks kinda nice and seems to have a lot going for it. It is in early access right now, it entered early access towards the end of 2023, 
to a few but very positive reviews, on Steam floating around 90% positive. They're planning for about a year in early access, so this should be looking at a full release towards the end of 2024 if it's not delayed. Could be cool. And then we have Plague Lords. The investigation of multiple disappearances in the midst of the Black Death turn into a bloody stand against the mysterious new threat. Survive in a turn-based tactical sandbox, managing a settlement and dozens of peasants, craftsmen and warriors, to stop the upcoming scourge. This one has you battling infected, exploring a land shrouded in mystery, and uncovering secrets as you command a small squad of trained soldiers, building up your own military camp with fortifications and crafting structures, even placing down traps, barricades, and fortifications to survive out here. So generally this one looks pretty interesting. I don't think there's too much that sort of looks or feels like it plays like this, and yeah. Could be cool. No particular demo or release window right now. There is supposed to be a prologue which will act as a demo for this game called Plague Lords Witch Hunt. Plague Lords the full game is supposed to be releasing quarter three of 2024. And then we've got Red Glare. This is a World War II real-time tactics game where you play agents of the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, combating a secret German expedition in South America. It has five well-balanced characters and a story campaign playing out across a continent, including multiple environments like jungle, desert, and snow maps, with real-time tactics, a dynamic day-night cycle on each map, which does have gameplay effects, a dynamic weather system which also has gameplay effects, and plenty of tactical approach, strategy, and stealth. You'll be encountering a wide variety of enemies, including tanks, dogs, and snipers. And maps can have more than 200 enemies, up to almost 500 enemies, which is pretty big for a real-time tactics game. Now, having said all that, this is from a solo developer, but considering that, it looks pretty good and it seems to be offering a lot. There is a free demo for you to check out just before its full release on the 25th of January 2024. So it's another one kicking off the year and you don't have to wait too long to play the full version of Red Glare. Going Mech, Arc Seed. You face the interstellar Archangels in a turn-based tactical game with deck building elements and a destructible environment where you pilot powerful mechs to save Earth from destruction. Mechs and tactical strategy games tend to go well together, and this one is sort of a pixel art indie looking one, and it seems to have some things going for it. You equip your mech where you can upgrade your systems, weapons, and manage your deck. There's a city fortress where you buy artillery, tanks, and more mechs to face the incoming threat. Buildings can be pushed and pulled and destroyed. You can build obstacles and use them as firing cover or even crush the angels between the buildings. All while you're trying to save the citizens, making sure the population is evacuated in time so that the governments will reward you. Now there's not a lot of details right now in terms of gameplay and all of that, but it is aiming for an early access release sometime in 2024, with up to half a year in early access, but I assume it will take much longer than that. So it could have a full release in 2024, but maybe it's delayed into 2025, for Arc Seed. Then, Crown Wars the Black Prince. The War of Crowns rages on, knights and brigands run rampant throughout the land, sowing destruction. From your castle base, you rise to become the lord who leads the battle against the forces of evil in this turn-based tactics and strategy game. So in this game, you are the boss, you're the lord of your fiefdom, and you'll be leading the battle against the forces of evil. You recruit, equip, and train your soldiers, manage your base of operations, as in your castle, and you go out into the world searching for the source of evil to thwart their diabolical plot. You will also have to handle your stewardship and use diplomacy, all while upgrading your keep to ensure your lands prosper and don't run out of resources. I mean, it's got a very fantasy medieval vibe to it, so if that's the kind of tactics game you're looking for, then Crown Wars The Black Prince is aiming for a 7th of March 2024 release window, so just a bit into the year. Then for a tactical shooter, Every Day We Fight. This is a rogue light turn-based tactical shooter 
that follows ordinary people turned freedom fighters forced to defend their world against a superior alien species. You're trapped in a time loop where you explore the city to enhance the squad and uncover who they were before the invasion began. I mean, it's an interesting premise. Ordinary citizens turned resistance fighters trapped in a time loop fighting off aliens. Sounds really cool. But will this game be really cool? It's hard to say, but there's a lot of deep tactical decision making on the table. And interestingly, you can take control during action moments where you can choose when and where to shoot, adding tactical depth to the action. Might be a nice little twist to this subgenre, but we'll find out. It's aiming for a release in 2024 at some point, and we'll see how every day we fight works out. Going back to World War II, Forgotten but Unbroken. This is a tactical turn-based strategy game inspired by XCOM, but supposed to be offering its unique take on the genre. You meet historical World War II heroes and fight against elite fighters of the Third Reich. You are leading the resistance against the Axis forces helping to liberate Europe. Basically, yeah, it's World War II XCOM, and I think, I mean, if it's just that, I think a lot of people will be into it, right? XCOM, very popular, everyone loves that as a turn-based tactics game. So basically, any other setting, if it's anywhere close to being as good as XCOM, people will love that. So the question really is, can it live up to that kind of quality and standards? Well, as it's aiming for a 2024 release, there is a free demo, so you can answer that question yourself. Free demo for Forgotten but Unbroken, go have a look. Next we have Rattenreich. This is a grim and unforgiving world where war has continued for years. Slum-like cities, burnt corpses, steam tanks, soldiers in imperial uniforms, and generally kind of an alternate history, alternate tech line kind of vibe. The environment is destructible, vehicles are customizable, and units have a lot of things that you can do with them. Now we've seen quite a bit of this game with a long 10 minute gameplay video on Steam which you can just watch if you want to see the whole thing. And it looks kind of good and seems like really looks very very promising. But you know until we get our hands on it we never know quite for sure but Rattenreich seems like one to watch. There is no release window at the moment, it just seems like a cool one that we're gonna have to keep our eyes on. Okay then I'm gonna mention this one real quick. End State. This is a turn-based tactics game where you manage a mercenary company tracking down terrorists in a war-torn country. You hire, gear up, and gain experience for your mercenaries, take on rebels and criminal gangs, do side contracts, and explore Brakovia. So generally the idea seems good, but this one has been in early access since the end of 2022, so it's been over a year now, which is past its early access window and it seems like it's going to take quite a bit longer because development is not exactly speeding on by. Also right now, if you go to the Steam page at the time of recording, it does say it's got few, like just about a hundred user reviews and it's mixed, but let's be fair, the mixed review at the time of recording is 69%, which is 1% away from being positive. So basically it's teetering on a positive rating on Steam. I hate how 69% is completely viewed differently compared to 70% on Steam. The color change from blue to orange, uh, it should be a gradient. But anyway, End State has been in early access. It could turn out to be something quite interesting through 2024, but we're gonna have to see how it goes. Next up, Heatwave, a sandbox non-linear guerrilla group simulator set in Alaska affected by climate change. This game combines mechanics of strategy, manager, and adventure games, as you are a leader of a guerrilla group and you start a fight for freedom and define the shape of a liberated country. So the year is 2080, in a much warmer looking Alaska, and you're running your own guerrilla faction, using and upgrading your bushcraft skills, exploring the wilderness and world, utilizing partisan tactics, diplomacy, and so much more really. It does look quite interesting and that there's a lot to this game, but it's early days right now. We haven't seen all that much and there's no particular release window. It's just to be announced. It could be something that's quite interesting and likely to release in 2024, but we'll see if Heatwave does actually deliver on all of these very cool promises. 
Classified France 44. Command an elite team of allied special operators in Nazi-occupied France, wreaking havoc in the run-up to D-Day in this ambitious turn-based tactics game. Take on the might of Germany's war machine and launch daring raids in occupied territory. Here's a game where every shot is meant to count, uh, the game having a unique morale system, and shots and receiving shots affects the morale of your units and the enemies, which can give opportunities to finish the job. You'll be able to shape the battle using stealth tactics or going in guns blazing, it's really up to you, as you build your team and go on missions, your team having an arsenal of skills and weapons, which you should tailor to what's required. Of course, the game is set in history, promising over 45 missions. So there should be a lot to experience and uh, learn about history as well through all of this. And the challenge is part of the design. I mean, tactical games in general are supposed to accommodate uh, those challenge enthusiasts, but this one, it is a specific selling point where this game can be particularly challenging. I mean, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's got that sort of uh, XCOM vibe to it, and uh, but it's set in World War II and in France, so that could be a nice twist. So you can go ahead and check out Classified France 44 and see if this is one that you're wanting to be jumping into. Flying into space and the future, Nebulous Fleet Command. Take command of your hand-tailored fleet of space warships and use realistic radar, electronic warfare, advanced movement controls in 3D space and precision targeting to outmaneuver and outwit your opponents in a simulation-heavy tactical space game. Now, what this game is promising is in-depth control of your space fleet, radar, e-war, and deception, being able to design and adapt to the situations you face across a space, a set of detailed subsystems so things aren't just fly a ship around and shoot things, you actually have to design and manage all sorts of things, and mod support is going to be a thing. Overall, the look of the game is pretty good. It's uh, visually decent, I suppose. Uh, pretty good for a game like this. And there seems to be quite a lot of things you can encounter as you go through space. Basically, the vibe I'm getting is that if you like Homeworld, but just the combat tactical part of it, then Nebulous Fleet Command might be for you. But let me know what you think. All right, next game. Going a bit more vehicular, we've got Tankocracy. That's, it's a bit hard to say that title, but Tankocracy. This is a tank tactical top-down shooter inspired by games like Desert Strike and Battletech on the Mega Drive. You'll lead your mercenary company to success by completing hardcore contracts and, well, basically destroying your enemies. I mean, this is a tank tactical game. I mean, you you kind of get what it's promising. You have a squad of tanks or a tank and you go around destroying things. However, this isn't quite set in modern day. There are mechs and or gears which are walking around. So you are going to be facing some difficult things. But generally, if you like tanks and just commanding tanks from the top down view perspective, Tankocracy looks like it could be a thing, but maybe based on the description, it might be a little bare bones. I'm not, they're not really promising all that much. However, there is a free demo on Steam that you can try right now, so why not just try it? It is said that it's supposed to be releasing by the end of 2023, but it'll be an early access, so it's gonna be in development through 2024 as well. For one that a lot of people have been asking me about, Broken Arrow. Here we have a large-scale, real-time, modern warfare tactics game. A unique army building system and deep unit customization tools allow for endless replayability, and there's supposed to be over 200 realistic military units and technologies, each battle being more immersive than the next. That is the promise. 
We'll have to wait and see if they can actually pull it off. The unique selling point is supposed to be action-packed combat. Uh, deploying units to the battlefield via land, sea and air, using paratroopers and helicopters to rapidly seize key locations. Large urban battlefields, custom units that you can design how you want, including the ammunition type. Building up your army with recon units, infantry, fighting vehicles, support, helicopters and airplanes. So there's a lot of variety to what you can compose your army with. And a powerful scenario editor with Steam Workshop support. So community content should be a pretty big thing with Broken Arrow. Like visually, this game looks pretty good and it sounds like there's a lot of stuff for you to do in it. There's a lot of games in this sort of modern or slash near future tank, military, tactics, kind of combat battlefield thing going on. There's a lot of games in this sector already and a lot more on the way as you'll see in this list. We'll see if Broken Arrow can actually break through all the competition. Speaking of tanks on a battlefield with military stuff, an already good success, Warno. This is a realistic, immersive, and supposedly breathtaking game, promising to be the ultimate World War III battle simulator. And it's from the strategy developers Eugen Systems, which they tend to go between RTS and tactics games. In Warno, a cold war turns decisively hot as you command hundreds of units on a battlefield where you have to outsmart, outfight, and lead your forces to total victory. This game has been in early access since the beginning of 2022, so it's coming up on two years now. But it's got thousands of reviews with a very positive rating on Steam, so it's going well. People like it. I mean, it says there's more than 600 different military units featured in the game. There's an army general campaign, scripted operations, and ever-evolving battlefields and maps rich with tactical options and objectives and terrain and all of that. This one's already a success if you are looking for a game like this. Warno is one that seems like a safe bet to jump into. However, they did say that they were planning to be an early access for about six to eight months, but it's been almost two years, so basically it might be one of those forever early access games, unless they decide to release over the next year or so. But generally, it seems like it's already good, so what does early access mean anyway? Headquarters World War II. This, contradictorily, is saying it's a fast-paced, turn-based strategy game where your battlefield tactics are as important as your army management skills. You get to experience both sides of the war battling in Europe as the USA and the UK, or as Germany. Storm bunkers, occupy houses, and win tank duels. So this game is a turn-based game. So it's the sort of classic tactics game where you have tanks and they do have sides. So shooting from the front or the back or the side does matter. Some tanks have more side armor than back armor, so shooting them in the back does count for extra points. But it is saying that it's fast paced as well. I mean, And in a turn-based game, what that means is that generally you're not gonna be slowly moving your units across the battlefield, getting into perfect position and then taking the perfect shots. It means you are gonna be a bit more brawly with your tactics, but that doesn't mean you just throw strategy out the window. You do have to prove yourself as a masterful tactician. This game is coming with an editor tool to create a skirmish and multiplayer maps, so the community-made content should keep this game going. And just visually, this one is one of the better looking ones. I had a closer look at this one over at Gamescom, and I zoomed right in to the game, like real up close to the visuals, and it's textured. It looks great. The art team did a phenomenal job on this game. Gameplay, I only touched it, and it seems pretty good, but uh, we'll see how it pans out over the next year. Going to the seas, Corsair's Battle of the Caribbean. An immersive adventure and strategy game set amidst the thrilling world of buccaneering. 
As a shrewd captain, you navigate tumultuous seas, engage in complex politics, and manage a diverse crew to establish maritime dominance and ensure your fleet's future. So obviously this is a bit more than just a tactics game, but I mean the naval battles are kind of the point here. So when I make these lists and label them as genres, there's a lot of mixed genres games out there. Obviously we could even call this one an RPG if you like, but what's the main point is the naval battles, which is more of a tactical experience. You'll be upgrading your ships and strengthening your crew, and you have three types of soldiers, tank, gunner, and agile, are the mainstay of your crew's fighting force. There is an expanded campaign mode with four engaging storylines. And there is a boarding mode, so it's not just ship-to-ship -ship combat, it's crew-to-crew -crew combat. On a side note, besides all of that, there are trading mechanics, managing your fleet and cities even, to defend and establish your dominance in the Caribbean region. This generally looks like something different, especially for this list, and it sounds kind of interesting, not just having the tactical naval battles, but also all of this management aspect to it, the trading and the cities. So this seems like a really cool take on the genre. So have a look and see if you want to get into Corsair's Battle of the Caribbean. Staying on the seas, Task Force Admiral. Currently Volume 1, American Carrier Battles. This seems like one of those tactical battle simulator kind of games, and it does seem like it's going to be releasing in various volumes based on the title of the game. This one's promising a game where you can experience the thrill of leading American aircraft carriers to victory in full 3D, set in the Pacific in 1942. Play the game in first person or from above while you lead your fleet and planes right from the center of the battle. So this is more of a wargaming kind of game, which I, I do count as a tactics game. But here, realism is key. Accurate real-life ship, aircraft camouflage and markings, advanced realistic ballistics and damage modeling, high level of sound immersion, dynamic original soundtrack, these are all things that are being promised by this game. And so it does seem like immersion and realism is sort of at the forefront of all of this. And it does look realistic and have a lot of features that are in line with keeping you in the game. If you like the realistic naval warfare with planes anyway. So obviously if you like aircraft carriers and aircrafts fighting over water, then this is going to be a game for you. But if you're looking for something a bit more fantastical or just prefer tanks, then maybe not this one. But generally this is looking kind of interesting and just the publisher is, is a bit of a throwback for me. It's published by Microprose Software. <laughs> Obviously not the same people, but wow, Microprose takes me back. All right, let's move on from this one. Now I said we're moving on, but actually kind of similar. Trident Naval Doctrine. Take command of a carrier strike group, a destroyer squadron, or a lone submarine in a real-time naval tactics game. Outsmart, outmaneuver, or outgun enemy fleets on, under, and over the seas. So what's this one about? Well, it's real-time tactics in a modern naval battle space. There's a wide range of kinetic and non-kinetic weapons and sensors, a procedural campaign with historical footing as well as fictional, game maps from all over the world, and this game will be releasing into early access. So although this should be playable sometime in 2024, it doesn't mean the game will be complete over the year. But, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you never know how long these games will be in early access. Could be six months, could be ten years, who knows. But generally, Trident Naval Doctrine in comparison to the last game, this one is not set during World War II. It seems more set during the modern age. And that's kind of where the, the games will differ. But for those of you who are more aficionados in this kind of naval war game kind of style, what is your take on the difference between the previous game and this one? Like, which one are you leaning towards? I'd love to hear your opinions on them. But yeah, that's a look at Trident Naval Doctrine. You let me know what you think. But moving on. A game that's bringing back an old IP, Stargate Timekeepers. This one is a real-time tactics game where you lead a team of specialists through a story-driven campaign set in the SG-1 universe, but importantly, this is not SG-1. This is all different characters, 
you know, a new story, a new kind of settings, but uh, it's still Stargate. Sneak your characters behind enemy lines using their unique skills, craft the perfect plan to unravel a time loop of mystery, and defeat the Guawuld threat. So it is set in that earlier Stargate kind of setting. But it's a tactics game, real-time tactics, leading a unit or multiple units through various maps, interacting with the environment, assassinating enemies, and achieving your objectives. Now, overall gameplay for Stargate Timekeepers does seem pretty solid, though at the time of me looking at this, it does seem a little lackluster here and there, particularly in the visuals and the animations, there doesn't seem to be that much impact to it. However, the gameplay for a real-time tactics squad-based kind of stealth game, it does seem like a pretty solid game. It's just the initial reveal it seemed to lack a little bit of uh, punch, you could say. But the environments look amazing, the gameplay seems solid, it's not finished yet, the game should be coming out sometime in 2024, so there is time for this to get better. So if you're interested in Stargate and you like tactics games, then I'd keep an eye on Stargate Timekeepers and see how it develops over the next six to eight months and see where it is then and assess it then. I don't want to judge it too early, but I'd keep this as a to watch game moving forward. Speaking of visuals, White Sands is an upcoming tactics game that should be going into early access sometime towards the end of 2023. Here you're a commander of the Union, a semi-state organization with military and research potential. Your goal is to help humanity rebuild. Modern military technology will give you an edge over the bandits, but it will be a difficult task. Now, the reason why I mentioned the visuals on this one is I know the game is called White Sands, but from the screenshots we've seen, it is white sands. Like, it's, it's blindingly white. So I know it's got a point and a style that it's going for, but it's sometimes hard to look at this game. It's so blindingly white. Now, that, that's an easy fix moving forward, and I'm sure as the game gets feedback uh, based on what people want to look at, it will adjust over time. It's going into early access after all. Hopefully the gameplay is solid behind the white bloom. <laughs> we'll find out what they're doing soon as it develops over the next year, and it is supposed to fully release within 6 to 12 months. However, I do expect games to always take longer than stated, so we'll see how it goes. Next up, Mars Tactics. Lead either capital or labor in an all-out war to control Mars. Command troops across both a detailed strategic map and procedurally generated tactical battlefields. Outmaneuvering the enemy using suppression and flanks, or you can call in airstrikes to remake the battlefield in a fiery blast. War on Mars, with some nice little isometric graphics, which I'm not against. This game is meant to have total tactical freedom with classic turn-based tactical combat, and it has that sort of uh, XCOM kind of stuff with suppression, flanking, cover, line of sight, fog of war, friendly fire, and all of that. So this is a more classical tactical experience, which I know a lot of people are still very much into, I mean, this definitely have a, a Xenonauts vibe to it as well, being that classic. I mean, it is still a 3D game, but it has that isometric style, which does bring it back. And notably, they're sort of selling this goal-oriented action planning for the AI. Enemy soldiers and commanders think ahead and look for creative ways to accomplish their goals. So it's saying that the AI is actually going to be kind of clever in this one, and that's always a difficult task to achieve, but we'll see how they manage it. I mean, overall, I personally love the look of this because it is more classic, and I do like the classical style of games, tactics or otherwise, so I'm into this so far. And if you're into the classic games as well, then this might be another take on the Xenonauts XCOM kind of style. So yeah, I think this one's uh, one that we can keep an eye on. It does say the release date is supposed to be 2023. However, we're approaching the end of 2023 now, so it might be a late 2023 release. Otherwise, it might be delayed into 2024. Either way, I'm gonna put it here because it's a game that we can play through 2024, and I don't want to miss it in case it is delayed. For a game that's been in early access for a while now, XO. This one entered early access at the end of 2019. 
16 and it's kind of a more indie development that's been chugging along in terms of development. There is no particular release window for when this is supposed to be ready, but this is a game where you build a fleet and lead humanity to safety, where you grow your fleet using force, diplomacy or guile, and try to stay ahead of the relentless harvesters. Each ship you add to your fleet gives you power, but also reduces your limited resources in this challenging RTS with pause kind of tactics game. Now, this has been in early access for a long time, and you can see from the visuals what you're getting into. It is basically a space tactics game with a unique kind of, I don't know, uh, wireframe Tron kind of look to it. Now, if you're unsure, the good news about this game is that there is a demo. So you can go check out the XO demo and see if you like it and see if you feel like you want to jump into it. The few reviews it's gotten so far are very positive. So the people who've played it seem to like it. If you like the look of it or just are kind of intrigued, you can try the free demo and then you let me know what you think of it. Anyway, that's XO. For one more take on the squad tactics game, Project Haven. Here we have a game set on the mean streets of Earth's last city. Lead the Steel Dragons, a mismatched mercenary crew on high-risk missions. Invest in equipment and stay ahead of the game one bullet at a time. You can play the story solo or in co-op, plus there's procedural skirmishes for one to four players. Now, this is a squad-based tactical game, as we are familiar by this point. Listing out immersive action, a flexible combat system, a story-driven campaign, RPG character progression, advanced weapon mechanics, particularly for ammo types, and weapon customizations and modifications. And there should be a lot of content with the solo campaign and the co-op modes. Now, this is another one that's supposed to be releasing in 2023, but there's no fixed release date as of recording this video but there is a free demo so you can go check that out i mean the game looks great the gameplay seems as solid as a squad based tactical game can be uh, like visually it looks great i like the style and if you're intrigued free demo always a good thing to have so go check it out now, for one that visually seems a bit confusing, I mean, this is really not quite revealed quite yet. It's called Never Dark, saying it's a pausable RTS game which throws you into a post-apocalyptic world. You're in a city following a global blackout. Society has collapsed and it will be your goal to rebuild it. Now, we haven't seen too much of this. I mean, I mean, there's a cinematic trailer and some screenshots, and the feature list is that there's real-time simulation strategy gameplay set in real cities and real maps. You get to make political decisions and figure your way out through events, and tactical combat because you need to deal with the other groups competing for control of the city. Overall, it does sound like an interesting idea, and but the, the, I mean, we haven't seen too much and uh, might be interesting, might be cool. We don't really know yet, but we'll I'll, I'll keep an eye on Neverdark and see if it turns out to be anything. It is supposed to be releasing in June 2024, so we should see more of it after we go into the year a little bit. Sticking with the post-apocalyptic setting, survive the fall. Scavenge, craft, build, and fight. This is a game set in an open world with a lot of action and rich story. Collect loot, fight to rebuild your community, and do some base building as you uncover secrets of the fallen world after a meteorite strike. So this is a tactics game with survival and exploration and base building. So that's always kind of cool. And you get to assemble a team that will help you survive and support you in battle. Or you could leave them at home to defend the base. The main features are a world full of secrets, a survivalist approach to gameplay, team and resource management, and construction and development of the settlement. Visually, it's not bad to look at either. It does have this sort of autumn aesthetic, sort of uh, fitting the, the downfall of civilization. <laughs> I mean, this one does look cool, and uh, I've been watching it for a while, but we haven't gotten many solid updates. I mean, some developer updates and gameplay features here and there, and there's no particular release window for it right now. But I think if you like tactics games and you like survival games with some base building, then Survive the Fall could be a good one on the horizon. 
Okay, now for something that's completely different from everything else on this list. The Stone of Madness. This is saying that it's a hardcore, real-time tactics and stealth game set in an ever-changing Spanish monastery. Five inmates are imprisoned under different pretenses, and in order to escape, they must face their phobias and risk worsening their conditions before madness completely takes them. Okay, so for a tactics game, this one is different. At the very least, nothing else is sounding like this one. You have to escape a monastery because you have a mental affliction and you need to face your madness. <laughs> So there's character progression and regression. You don't just progress, you go backwards in this game. You have to discover the secrets of the monastery and because your memory is going, there's a semi-procedural system. So the layout of the monastery keeps changing. It's not, it doesn't keep changing, you keep forgetting where things are. And there is a day-night cycle which does affect your, your stability, I suppose. The artwork is very unique and just the overall premise does set this apart. But it's still a tactics game. I mean, it's saying it's taken inspiration from games like Shadow Tactics and Desperados and Commandos. So it's definitely a tactics game. It's just the setting is rather crazy. So I love the look of it. I like the idea. There's no particular release window as of recording, but the Stone of Madness, this is something that I want to keep an eye on. Sticking to the monastery, but more on the illustration side, we've got Inculinati. This is a game that's set on the pages of a medieval manuscript where you have to sort of... Well, it's a turn-based strategy game where a rabbit's bum can be deadlier than a dog's sword is the line they're going for. Become a master of living ink. Build your own bestiary, defeat medieval superstars, and collect perks to unleash hidden powers. So this one is already in early access since the start of 2023, and it's going well. There's only a handful of reviews, but they are very positive, and like the last game, there really isn't anything else quite like this in the genre or anywhere, really. I mean, it's got a Monty Python-esque sort of vibe to it, of course, it's hard to ignore that comparison. But it does have its own unique style, and there's local PvP mode to duel your friends or foes, and it is pretty much a tactical combat strategy game, it's just the abilities and the, the units are, well, those weird drawings of snails and dogs and lions from medieval manuscripts and it looks really cool. Now going through early access it is working towards a 2024 release and most of the new features on the roadmap have been implemented so far so it's going along quite well. If you're interested but waiting for it then it should release soon-ish but otherwise you can jump in right now and I think it looks like a lot of fun. And then we've got Hexen Hunters. Lead a party of 18th century hunters against the forces of hell in this turn-based tactical RPG that sort of feels like it's real time, but it's not. It is still turn-based. Manage your base of operations, train your team of witch hunters, and fight to save the world from certain doom. Aesthetically and gameplay-wise and setting-wise, it does have a sort of Darkest Dungeon vibe to it. But the main selling point of Hex and Hunters is that even though it's turn-based, it's sort of designed to try and be real-time, or feel real-time. So when it's turned for a unit to move, there's a circle, like a radius, which they can run around in, and they can freely run around in there. And then you trigger your ability to attack a specific enemy, or heal an ally, or whatever. So it, even though it is turn-based and tactical, it is still, it doesn't feel as rigid. And that is an interesting approach to the combat, but we'll see how it actually works out. It's, it's trying to be between turn-based and real-time, basically. And that could be really cool, or it could just not be as good as either one. But there is that base of operations and stuff, and interestingly, there is basically a countdown to the Doomsday Clock. So you need to either turn back time to stop the end of the world from happening, or achieve your object objective in time. So there's a lot to see and do here, but it's still early days. It's planning to release sometime in 2024, and we'll be able to keep an eye on its development moving forward. But yeah, this combat system really is the thing to analyze here, and to see if it actually does work. 
Being a bit more multiplayer, massively so, it's Anvil Empires. This is a massively multiplayer game where thousands of players work together to build empires, wage war, and conquer in a persistent online world. You get to march alongside armies of players in massive melee battles and large-scale sieges. So, okay, this one, I don't know, I don't even know what genre to put this in. It's kind of a tactical strategy MMO base building thing, and I just kind of feel like the battles, the real-time battles are kind of the focus here, so I'm putting it as a tactics game, but I really want to know what you think of this one, because nothing really is like this. Which does also mean that this could be a huge success because there's no competition, or it just falls flat because, well, it's the first one of its kind and it doesn't quite really work out so well. But we'll see how it goes. You are supposed to go on these massively multiplayer conquests with all these other people, which also, by the way, does rely on there being a large player base for it to be real people. You do get to build a base and build an empire and manage all your medieval logistics to keep things running. So this looks great, this sounds great, but again, when it comes to these sorts of MMO kind of strategy games, it does really rely on people wanting to play the game and wanting to continue to play the game. If the player base dies out, then the whole point of it kind of feels meaningless. So Anvil Empires could be really, really cool, could be not. Now going back out into space and sci-fi, Moonbreaker. This is a turn-based strategy tactical skirmish game designed to be a true digital miniature experience. This game is set in an expansive sci-fi universe crafted by Brandon Sanderson and you get to direct captain and crew in a gripping ever-changing competition and adventure. Now this really is supposed to be like tabletop miniature kind of experience to the point where you get to paint your units. <laughs> you get to paint your figures how you want. So basically, if you're into D&D, if you're into Warhammer, if, if you're into the tabletop miniature experience, then this is a tactics game for you. Like half the selling point is that it is these miniatures. Like they're animated like miniatures on a table and everything. So Moonbreaker seems very, very cool. It is actually in early access. So just crossing over a thousand user reviews so far. And it's very positive, almost 90% positive. So people are liking it, but I do think it is for a specific audience. Like if you're into this stuff, you should love this, right? If you're not into this stuff, then obviously, well, you're not going to be into this stuff. But yeah, Moonbreaker. Breaker, very interesting. It's in early access. It's supposed to be releasing sometime by 2024, but of course it could take longer in early access. But that's when it's initially aiming for. And yeah, that's Moonbreaker. Staying in space, and specifically Mars, it's Space Gears. This is supposed to be a next generation strategy game set on Mars. And you're not supposed to worry about micromanaging build orders or your resources, you just set your sights on victory by raising an army of mechs and building up your base in this fast-paced PvE and PvP strategy game. So this is sort of what I kind of define the difference between an RTS and a tactics, a real-time tactics game. It's really whether the focus is on just the battles or if the base building and the resource collection and the unit micro kind of matter as well. So Space Gears, it's not really focused on the base building or resource collection. It is about the battles, about the combat, and that seems to be what it's delivering. It is set in the Space Gears universe, which is the latter half of the 21st century, where, you know, everything's all about Mars, basically. But there is an unknown threat that's coming to, well, kill everything. Unless you stop it, of course. Now, this game is planning to, well, it says it's planning to release by the end of 2023, so basically I'm gonna count it as a 2024 game. And it does look interesting, though, you know, there's more games like this on the market already, so it's gonna have a fight ahead of it, not just against the unknown alien enemies, but also against other competing games. Speaking of competing games, we've got Menace from the developers of Battle Brothers, most notably. But this time it's sci-fi and 3D. Lead a strike force against an alien threat in this turn-based tactical RPG as you're answering distress calls from across different worlds. 
train and equip infantry, deploy tanks and mechs, and plan and execute missions in detailed turn-based battles. Now, Battle Brothers was sort of an unexpected success. When it was first revealed, everyone sort of complained about the art style and that it just looks like some small indie game, but Battle Brothers blew up, it became massively successful, and Menace, I don't know whether it's gonna be for the same audience, like gameplay-wise and mechanics-wise, yes, it's gonna be that kind of stuff that people love. But it is sci-fi, and it is 3D, and I wonder if people are gonna be like, no, I want the, the 2D art style that looks like Prison Architect and RimWorld, please bring that back. <laughs> That's always gonna be how it is, right? You do one art style, people complain, you do the other art style, people still complain. But overall, Menace is looking like a really good game. It is planning to release in 2024. There's a lot to deal with on these tactical battles, including destructible environments and just changing of uh, the landscape of things. And you do have to manage your resources and manage your soldiers as you try and survive through all of these various missions to not get whittled down by the other human and non-human threats. So yeah, I think Menace is one that's one to watch and it could be a huge success. There's a lot of lessons they could have learned from Battle Brothers to implement in this game and it is very much a different thing. So they have the freedom to implement changes without being too tied to Battle Brothers. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, then for one that's kind of... I, mean, I know I've called this an RTS in the past, but I really do think it's a real-time tactics game. It's Mechabellum, right? Which is kind of an auto-battler, so I don't, I don't know how to list these games so much anymore. Like, But this one, it is popular with RTS players. It is popular with auto-battler players, and I do kind of feel that it is a tactics game in terms of how you're choosing your units and positioning them on the battlefield. Even if you don't have direct control once the battle begins, it does still have a lot of tactics and strategy, otherwise how could you be better or worse at the game? But Mechabellum has been very successful so far. It's been in early access since about mid-2023 with thousands of reviews and leaning towards over 80%, close to 90% positive rating. So people are loving Mechabellum. It looks great, it plays, I mean, I think it delivers what it's trying to deliver is, is why it's successful. And it's got this cool sci-fi explosive battlefield kind of management tactics thing going on. So yeah, Mechabellum, it's already kind of a success. If you haven't tried it, you can check it out. People are liking it and it is supposed to release in 2024 fully. So if you're waiting for full release, it shouldn't be too much longer for that if they're sticking to their original timeline. And of course, how could I have a tactics list without mentioning Xenonauts 2? A game that I personally have been watching for a long time. <laughs> and it finally released into early access, middle of 2023. And it is aiming for a 2024 release window. But of course, as they always say, it depends on player feedback and we might stay in development longer. But it's Xenonauts 2, right? the sequel to a classic tactical game that's about a global war of resistance against an alien invasion. You command turn-based tactical battles, building a network of covert bases across the world, and directly control your fighter wings and achieve strategic victory in a simulation of asymmetric warfare against a technologically superior foe. Xenonauts is sort of the classic tactical game, sci-fi tactical game, and I mean, it's great to see that it's back, it's in isometric, it has that classic style. I mean, you, you can't get much more classic with a new tactics game than Xenonauts 2. And people are liking it through early access so far. It's just about crossed a thousand user reviews at about 75% positive. So it's not the most liked, but it is still quite positive reviews and it is still going through early access. So it should only get better from here. So yeah, Xenonauts 2. I think if you're a tactics fan, you probably already know about it, but I'm going to mention it anyway, because of course I am. And then for a last minute entry for Men of War 2. That's right, this highly anticipated sequel 
to a real-time tactics franchise, was supposed to release in 2023, September that is, but it was delayed almost last minute to into 2024. Now this could be a very good thing because they say the feedback for the game in testing so far has been very good, but they need more time to squash bugs and just refine up the experience. So this could be a good thing for the game. Hopefully it is actually as refined as it needs to be by the time it does actually release. Anyway, this game is supposed to be bringing us all new units, locations, campaigns and game modes in a World War II tactical RTS-ish war game taking place on the Eastern and Western fronts. Now on the Steam page it does say that it's classic real-time strategy gameplay, but keep in mind this is just the combat aspect, there's no real base building or resource collection kind of thing, so I consider this more of a tactics game. But with a new advanced AI, a cinematic single player experience, multiplayer combat in PvP and co-op modes, with varied and historical units, and just generally really good graphics, along with full mod support, Men of War 2 does promise a lot and everyone seems to be into what it is. Even if you don't consider it a proper RTS, RTS fans are looking forward to this one. So hopefully the game does end up as refined as it needs to be and delivers on all of these promises. But it's gonna be in 2024 either way. Oh man, there you have it! Press the like button and get games using the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Click the link and buy any game, it really does help. Also, thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. Join if you want your name on future videos. If you want to stay in the know for another genre, because yes, all of this is only one genre, Go to the next list video linked on screen as I'm sure commanders like yourself would not want to miss all the simulation and city building games in the other lists. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.